Hi everyone, welcome to uh, a cube draft this time. And today I'm joined by uh, Frank Kirsten. Hello. And we're going to do this draft together. Um, this is the first booster. And this is an unpowered cube, so there are no moxes or black lotuses or time walks. And, um, they put a bit more focus on the aggressive decks this time, including a lot more cards that are just cheap effective creatures instead of more powerful spells. And, um, so what do you think of the first booster? Horrible booster. Can we swap it for something else? I don't know. Hallowed Fountain? Well, I was actually thinking about uh, taking the Planeswalker here. Garrick, Valentis. Might also be fine. Because he... Um, Planeswalkers are always decent and he's just a single green so he can splash him in anything. Uh, but but I agree with you, I'm not excited about any of the other cards. Most of them are just regular cards, good cards and the cube can do a whole lot better than what we're seeing here. I so. mean, Tutanil has some upside, but I guess Garrick is the better pick. Sure. And then we get a booster with another Garrick and a lot of stuff if you want to go mono red aggro. <coughs> so once again the booster I'm not really excited about. <laughs> yeah, I uh, Garrick might actually be the best card in the pack, but I would like taking another Garrick. Just lead to awkward situations. Um, yeah, you could pick search for tomorrow, move into kind of a ramp green deck. Um, the red cards are also not very exciting, even if you go into mono red. I mean, something like Hard Twill is fine, but not very exciting. Um, yeah, or a land, but. I think it would have to be slash sanctuary if it was a land. Uh, it's a better option. I don't think that these two cards are really all that special, but I think actually that search for tomorrow might yeah, be the I best card. Yeah, I guess the ramp card is always good. So here we get a bit better booster, at least with, the, with a little bit of perspective. There's still a very powerful sword in here. Um, with a lot of expensive cards like Nico Bolos and Ooh. the Woodfall Primus that really are, are worth being played, but um, you can just as easily get overrun by the deck with Kurt Apes. I'm strangely drawn to Nico Bolos, but <laughs> probably the sword is the pick with the cards that you already have. Yeah, I, I think if it's we. The, it's the mill Yeah, that's yeah, it's that's pretty good on the wall. And actually, um, blue and green are surprisingly strong in this queue. Uh, because uh, a lot is creature based, a lot of is aggressive, so the, that counts the green parts. And there are a lot of blue cheap tricks to counter that strategy. And I think the protection of these two colors would actually be more relevant than white or red at this point. Sure. If we had two Grixis cards, I probably would have taken Nickel Bones because it's just awesome. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so this booster has um, a couple of cards with perspective, like Buried Alive. But I find that this cube just doesn't really support those kind of decks. Like, if you get Buried Alive and other reanimator cards, you probably either have not enough reanimator cards and not enough fat creatures to make it work. Mm. And combining it with other strategies like Show and Tell or Sneak Attack really needs really means you need to rely on getting those cards as well. And you probably just get an awkward deck with a lot of cards that don't work together. And it's, it's a bit of a shame. But it does have uh, Lanora Elves and Court of Calling, which are the cards that appeal to me in this booster. I think the Lanora Elf fits well with the sword and the Garrick that we already have, so seems fine. <coughs> and then here we have another booster that doesn't really hold a lot of value. Um, there actually isn't a card in here that I would really like at this point. I think the Hinterland Harbor might actually be the best one. Everflowing Chalice could be good if we really end up in kind of a, a ramp deck with some, I don't know, six or seven mana fetties. Um, yeah, alternatively, Marsh Flats, Fetchlands are always good. But so far, we're just mono color. Um, I don't know, all the cards I've seen so <laughs> far are horrible actually. Yeah, I did. These weren't some very good boosters. I'm going to take the chalice because we're running out of time. Sure. So 
So and then we have a booster like this. And it's once again not a whole lot of stuff that we get really excited about. Um, I think that all this dust has a little bit uh, of potential in a deck like this where you just ramp up to something and just wipe away their board and you even get to hold to get to hold on to jealous and swords and stuff like that. Yeah, we might ramp into an Ulamorg and then play all this dust uh, the turn after, that seems uh, <laughs> enticing. Uh, Beast Within might also be, uh, be okay. Yeah, it's a, it's a decent removal spell, but this cube really does hold a lot of better removal cards. Um, and I think that, especially since there is no need to commit to just one color, uh, cards like Beast Within lose a bit of value. Um, because you can ju just easily dip into another color and get the solution that you were looking for. And so, <laughs> Tendrils of Agony. <laughs> <coughs> You're, um, that was a serious comment. Don't worry. Uh, I mean, we do have stuff like Search for Tomorrow and Everflow and Chalice that might work well with a Storm deck. Mm -hmm. uh, I am I'm not very familiar with this cube, so I'm not sure whether there is enough support to, to go into that route. The, the boosters I've seen so far are pretty underpowered. Probably a land is better, maybe Isolate. Ah, Isolate, yeah, that was horrible. Let's just turn glaciers. Uh, well, I guess. And then we get this booster, which, once again, there's, there's a whole lot of, of just powerful red cards coming along, so someone to our left is probably feasting on some modern red deck. Um, is I've this a smokestack deck? It could be. Well, at least we have a lot of permanence, and having Smokestack out while casting all of Dust, all of Dust is pretty powerful since you just wipe all their permanence and then they get sacrificed lands. Mm -hmm. Skull deck might also be good. We already have one shuffle effect in Search for Tomorrow. Yeah, and we have Storm Glaciers, which can shuffle every turn. Pick whatever you want. Smokestack seems also fine. I'll, I'll take the Skull Rack for the little bit um, more ramp route. I mean, the, 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 the Smokestack will eventually keep our ramp back, and if we get lucky and get Primeful Titan or something mm -hmm. like that, and I really want to get that ramp plan going. So this booster doesn't really have a lot. This was our first booster, actually. Faretian Revoker, perhaps? It, I mean it, it does it have it a lot of good uses. I mean, it works with all this dust and uh, a sort of body and mind. So. And there, are, there are a lot of Planeswalkers running around that you really want to shut down with a Revoker. If we had, had taken the smokestack, we might consider the braids <laughs> right now and, and just go for that deck. Um, but since we didn't, I think we might actually just want the land to fix or maybe take the Spark Mage. But I don't really think it's a very good card, it's just an okay card. I it's like when in doubt, just pick a land. You never know yeah. how uh, how it ends up. <coughs> we might uh, screw it with all the perfect. Yeah, that's a good one. And here we get the semi Growth Chamber, yep. which is pretty fine on its own. And here we get... Um, I think Rosen Grip might be the best card. Yeah, for the sideboard. Uh, to have a bit of sideboard, the other two cards we're going to make the deck anyway. And here, well, we can take the Empty the Warrants and see if we can still Ooh, go yeah. for something that looks like Storm. Ah, don't put it in the sideboard yet. <laughs> I'll just put it inside. <coughs> so, so far, I'm, I'm not really excited about what we have, but I wasn't really excited about what we were offered, so. I'm I'm pretty okay with with how this is turning out, and there is a lot of potential for. Jeez. Sure, I, gu I guess I'm uh, I've grown used to powered cubes, so then seeing all this is a bit uh, disappointing. But I guess this is a fine setup for a green ramp deck, with perhaps some <coughs> early creatures thrown in for the sort of body in mind. Yep. Uh, the all this dust is also. Uh, an interesting one that yeah, it could lead us into a mono green artifact or I mean are are the Eldrazi creatures uh, in here? Yeah they're they're the only the big ones, Koselek and Ulamok are here. Or mi mirror battle sphere that also works. Like yeah, that's that's pretty uh, pretty colorless. And let's see because the rest of the booster is once again pretty empty. Um there are some powerful cards here. I, I myself am a very big fan of the Fantasmal image. Um, I think the Ranged Hermit uh, has a lot of potential, especially since Recurring Nightmare and cards like that are still in, in here. Um, but yeah, I think that Mirror Battle Sphere is the card we want for this deck. It fits mm -hmm. well into the into the ramp deck, it works well with all its dust. And is and Stinker in this cube? 
I haven't seen it yet, but I'm not sure. I think they left it in. Uh, that might also be a reason to uh, to take it. We'll just uh, grab hold of this one, and with a little bit of luck, we might be able to wield uh, the hermit or the image. Because I don't know, I don't think they uh, get picked very I high. I don't think we're wielding the image. Will probably be picked up in uh, one of the next couple of uh, picks. Um, yeah, this seems like a muta vault for it's us. It's a bit All of the other booster. cards don't really seem to fit. Academy Rector, what does it even get? Um, I, I haven't seen many art of uh, enchantments so far. There, there are some powerful ones. There are a couple of control magics like treachery, um, and a lot of oh, well, there, there's actually a future side in the same pack. There, of there's course, future side. A uh, future side will nice table one. to us. Uh, people yeah, don't like I this online. With our current setup, I don't see us returning into an academy like the future side deck yet. But uh, no, not really. Actually, near Battlesphere might have been good had we picked up the buried alive or something but i think mutavold is just fine you usually have too many spells and not enough lands and this especially in a mostly green deck uh with which might even be monocolor is uh, seems like a strict upgrade to a basic forest <coughs> and then we get this booster and here we're getting a little bit of payoff um, I'm, I'm uh, a fan of, of both Fenchvine and Yeva in this format because they just bring solid power to the board for a very cheap 4 mana. Um, especially since we already have 3 ram spells that can give us access to 4 mana in turn 3. I'm um, also a really big fan of Maelstrom Pulse because it just answers a whole lot of problems. Especially the powerful Planeswalkers which... Genesis Wave? Well there's also <laughs> Genesis Wave. Um, but... Well, it's it is it's an interesting card, but I'm not sure if it's if it's a good card. <laughs> um, um, I think that if there was a deck for it, this <coughs> would be the deck for it. So, uh, it, it really depends on what card we're going to take. The downside is that you need to generate a lot of mana if you if you want to hit things like this. Uh, but the upside is that you you're going to hit a lot of cards with it when you do. Mm. So we can take it and see how it works out. Nah, just take a bench fine. Yeah. No, not a pills. Sorry. <laughs> I we only the second left, so <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I should mind the clock. Sorry. Yeah, and th th this this is uh, a word uh, a thing that's stupid about the uh, about the beta yet. Um, if you random a card or if you pick the selected card, then it just sorts your cards automatically again. Um, so now everything huh? <laughs> everything's thrown together again <laughs> in a big pile. <laughs> it's an interesting uh, feature. Yeah. So what uh, we should have taken the bench fine. Uh, I think that would have been a lot better, uh, a bit better than Pulse because we didn't have any black cards yet. But now we're stuck with the Pulse. I'm not unhappy about that. Well then just pick the Woodland Cemetery now. Yeah, that would be a good fixing. I'm also considering the Lingering Souls because it, it isn't hard to get white into this deck already. Um, and I think it's, it's a great upside as well. But I know you're a fan of just having a solid mana base and I think the Cemetery might be the best card for that. <laughs> And <laughs> there we went our time again. <laughs> um, so yeah, this if we, if we had taken the lingering souls, we could now take the case of Kylos and fix the double splash a bit. So, but we didn't. So let's not uh, think about it. I think that Rude Awakening might be the card that we want. Uh, if we ramp, <laughs> we will be able to have that eight mana and just blow out the game with it. Especially yeah. since most of our ramp already seems to be generating extra lands instead of extra mana so we'll get the maximum value out of it yeah well you do see the reanimate coming by so there would have been some uh, some option there but i guess wood awakening is, is fine yeah there, there's also a gamble here no i just just take the wood awakening but it's uh, it's an indication that there are already five players not on a reanimator plan uh, because they would have taken either the reanimate or the gamble because that would be good cards in the deck Mm -hmm. So uh, people are just ignoring it, it's just being left where it is and and that's it. Um, here we get the interesting explorer if you go ramp. Yep. And that's about it. That seems uh, like the pick. Actually looking at the, the timer, I'm actually wondering why they put it in the bottom right corner. Because my eye is never drawn to it. If they had put it somewhere on, on the left, mm -hmm. I would have more readily uh, seen it. Um, yeah, 
Yeah, yeah there, there are a few bugs in the battle. It does change color. I mean, it gets it gets this yellowish after 10 seconds, and when you have 3 seconds left, it gets an alarming red. But indeed, it, it, it just... Yeah, I actually didn't it. notice it while I was just looking at uh, the yeah. cards. So. so, here we get the very fine Wood Elves and the very fine Arbor Elf for our deck. Um, and um, I think Wood Elves might be the better card here. I think it's a close a close call between both of them, but the fact that this generates a land for a Wood Awakening and it's a little bit more stable than Arbor Elf is because that can, ju can just shut out and... Um, you'll be left with, with no mana acceleration, while well you might really need that to get to this. So I'd be tempted to take the Wood Elves instead of the Arbor Elf. Sure. <coughs> Seems fine. Then here we get Primal Command. There's also a very late Remnitism of War, mm. which is basically Armageddon. Yeah, that might have been good had we taken more of the Arbor Elf type cards. Well, not Arbor Elf <laughs> specifically, <laughs> but uh, uh, I, I think the Primal Command fits in better in this deck. Yeah. We're kind of high on mana acceleration and don't have many ways to uh, put all that mana to good use. Right now we just have one mere Battle Sphere and that's it. So Primal Command can, uh, can help actually win the game. Um, and here we're getting a pretty empty booster again. Uh, Watery Grave seems fine. Yeah, it's we uh, might want to splash the Maelstrom Pulse as well as some other blue card that we pick up later. We already uh, have the Growth Chamber to yeah. fix another blue mana, yeah. so it's uh, it's okay. <laughs> the Shadow Mage Infiltrator <laughs> 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 might be a bit ambitious, but uh, yeah, I think the double I mean, I mean the, the Archer of Bolas also doesn't seem to work in the deck. I wouldn't know what else to take. Well, the Assassin is an option, but, but it is going to level very slowly, and I don't think it'll be no. destroying a lot of creatures. No. I like John Finkel. We'll just take Why not? Him. We'll just put him with the Empty Worms and <laughs> see if he makes it. The Genesis Wave is coming around, so we can still take it, or we can take the Putrid Leech. What is that uh, Ninjitsu card? Um, this I've is never seen this. This is a clone with Ninjitsu. It's from the Commando set, so it's pretty new. Okay. And it's uh, it, it's specialable. We could play it, uh, and it's basically just a clone with the new two. Ah, just picked up. Wow. Well, maybe the put would leave even. No, no, it's just. So it's we were out of time again. So. A <laughs> it's it's the. Um, well, there's nothing that we want. I mean, we could take narcolepsy and board it in against a deck that has a lot of really annoying creatures, I suppose. Sure. Yeah, we don't have much in the way of removal. Yeah, and again, we, we may not uh, need two cards that need a lot Take of the spots. gamble. <laughs> That's for us. Yes. Uh, With black cards. Uh, no, a morph in case we like playables. Well, at least that's how we did it in Onslaught uh, Draft. <laughs> <laughs> Probably well, if you uh, play Headhunter. Well, ooh, it might actually be uh, be okay if you just play it uh, face up and then equip it with a sword mm. and uh, give your opponent the business. So Still not the best. Here we are getting some payoff in the form of Kozilek. Ah, ah no, so good. that's that's good enough. What else? There's, um, there's Oracle of uh, Moldaya, of Moldaya which is also pretty good. Yeah. And Trend Dynamo, uh, also a solid card. And there's Hypocrisite, which I really like as well. It's a bit slower, but um, it's also an artifact that's colorless. It's fires all its dust, mm. and it's really, it's really annoying card, especially if the game goes a bit longer, if you can stall it out. And I gotta say, I do like the Oracle of Muldaya, especially with Skolrek and yeah. the couple of shuffle effects that we have, as well as with the Rude Awakening. Well, we, we can um, take the Oracle instead of the Kozilek and still have a solid deck, but we really need to be on the lookout for um, more endgame then. I mean, this is another one of the endgame enablers, and we'll have a very smooth deck, but we'll have to finish it with a Putrid Leech. <laughs> mm. I'm not opposed to taking the Oracle right now. I think it's a really good card, it fits really well in this deck, and might actually be better than, than the Kozilek. I think both are fine. Just pick whatever, whichever you like. I'll I'll take the Oracle and see if we can fix us another fatty to go with it. And here's a booster without a fatty. It actually doesn't have anything interesting. Mm. You could take Trinket Mage to get Everflown Chalice. Also not very <laughs> exciting. Uh, you could take either vial then uh, get 
first the headhunter out of it and then the shadow mage infiltrator and then uh, level it up to seven and beam mirror battle sphere um, yeah there's some saurian brooding in the pack but it's all pretty exciting mm. i think we might actually be be Taking the city of brass. Uh, I'm not a fan of city of brass. So much damage. Yeah, but it, it does fix our our shadow mission traitor if we're going to play it. And a big else pet. Splash some white. I mean, we don't have any white fixing except glacial fortress. Yeah. But and we're running out of time again. Just so. well, I don't know. We'll just take the else pet and see if, if we get any payoff for that. Um, and then we get this. And this once again is. Not full of a lot of cards that, that are exciting to look at. Uh, we have Histrodon, which is decent, I guess. And there's Banefire, which fits into the ramp plan, but we're not aggressive enough to really use it, I suppose. There's also Ultimate Price, which is okay to splash in the deck. And yeah, with some hands we might be aggressive, or in some matchups we may want to be aggressive, in which case Dry Sophisticate is pretty good. Two one unblockable. Yeah, it's, it's basically it's a good deal. It's also Windswept very good with sword. Windswept heat might also be an option if you want to uh, splash possibly splash the Elspeth. Yeah. I have no idea which one's the best. <laughs> um. I'll just I'll just take the right. I think it goes best with our sword and putting some early game pressure on will give yeah. us more time to develop the the late game cards. Uh, we're getting over Tomb here. I mean, also some of our late game cards, such as Rude Awakening. Uh, usually don't completely win by themselves. It helps a lot if you had already dealt the opponent some damage before. Yeah. yeah. Here we have Overgrown Tomb. That's pretty important because you can find it in Wood Elves. So I think this is a good card to take. Sure. Um, um, we also could consider taking the Awakening Zone or the Seaside Citadel to get our fixing up. Yeah, well, mm -hmm. Awakening Zone might be good. Um, but I'd like to overgrow too better. I think we could definitely use more lands, and the interaction with wood elves is also important. We don't even have that many black cards yet. It's no, it's but the still the leech in the pulse. <laughs> okay, here we get interesting cards. We have Savannah. If you want to go for the elf pet, we have Borderland Ranger, which might help us out. And there's Mold Chamber as scavenging ooze, which are pretty good green cards. There's also Restoration Angel, which is a pretty good card, but I don't think we have anything to work with that. Well, the Mere Petal Sphere. But so I think mm -hmm. the, the Mold Shambler might be the, m the more interesting card, because its its kicker is really relevant, um, and provides us something to do with all that mana that we're generating. That said, any of the fixers would not be unwelcome either. So, Isn't Scavenging Ooze? Good. Uh, it's pretty good, but as you saw, the reanimate is coming in late, and you know, we're running out of time again. Yeah, all, all the reanimate is coming in late, um, and people are just not really focusing on that. Ooh, burning pot! Can we make something out of this? Nope. <laughs> not really. We can turn our two drops into three drops, mm. and uh, um, there is kitchen um, things might be okay. Kitchen things and multi-tail masticor. It's a card that can use a lot of mana. That can do a lot of things if you have the right mana for it. It's also an artifact to survive all this dust. Uh, Gitchen Things is a very good creature. One of the best cards in the cube, I think. Oh, well, then you should take it. Yeah, or Opposition, is that uh, an option? It is an option, but we have only 12 <coughs> creatures. <coughs> and I think by the time that we land Mere Battle Sphere, we're going to win anyway, so... I think we would be better off with one of the two creatures, and I think Gitchen Things is the better one of the two. Here is a stunt and growth and flow under, under and harmonize. And harmonize. Uh, There's also syndicate. Yeah, <laughs> I think harmonize is the best of the bunch. I think so too. We are going to have a lot of mana. We just need cards to do with that mana. And harmonize can really help us out. Looking at the deck, it doesn't seem that exciting uh, yet. It's kind of a semi controlish with some aggro elements nonsense deck. That's yeah. it's now going to pick I don't know Palladium Mirror. Which yeah. Yeah, I think it's the best card. It's not really we, going we could take anyway. the engineered explosives because we can afford to make four colors. Um but I think as removal spell it's 
is pretty much on the power. And I think the Gladiomir might actually do good things for us. It's also an artifact and a creature. So. How about the Mentor of the Meek? Together with Garrick Relentless, all the value. Uh, it's, it's an option. And with Elspeth. I don't know, maybe we need to actually play the white in order to have something. Right. Uh, um, here we have all Sun The other one's probably better. Well, we, we've seen to have been making the pick that we didn't want <laughs> the entire draft. Sure. So, um, here we have all Sun's Dawn. I think it's an interesting card because it can potentially give a lot of value, but the question yeah, it's is perfect really in an oldest dust deck. Yeah. <laughs> Except that. Well, that what, what else in the pack? A lot of cards that wouldn't really make the deck anyway. Sure. So, I think we can take it and see if we have enough cards that are in green to actually make it work. And um, well, this is. Not a whole lot of exciting stuff. Destructive force, yeah, that's also not going to fit. No, we, we don't even have any red fixers yet. Maybe just take the Brooding Saurian, the Fetty or something. Yeah, it, it still has the 4 mana for power ratio that I so loved in, in Yeva and French Fine. And Mother of Hoods, perhaps if we go for the white route. Mm. It's a really good card, it can win games on its own versus uh, some decks. And the other cards are just probably too taxing on the mana base to uh, to really include. I mean, the double black is going to be happy, and the bane fire is is too red. And here we get sea at all. Yes. Well, the catastrophe is all. <laughs> okay. Well, Borderlands Ranger. Okay. Well, the the mana should be okay, even though we don't have uh, many white oh. cards. We're still getting the must card on the back swing. Sure. I mean, the birthing pot still won't do a lot of things for us. No. And Raven Threats. You might actually play that, so I'll put it in the playlist. I mean, it's Raven Threats. It wouldn't be in the cube, it wasn't good. But at least it'll be an interesting deck. But yeah, I agree with you that it's a bit underpowered and that it could have been a lot better if we had decided on a clear focus earlier on. It's one of the dangers with the ramp, as I described with the reanimator plan, that there's just there's the possibility of not getting anything. I mean, mm. we haven't seen a lot of late game cards that we could pick, and every time there was a viable one, there was a better early game card. So, um, can you take out the land so it's easier to see how many cards in total are yeah. remaining? Yeah. There okay. we go. Okay, well, that empty the warrants is not happening. Too uh, bad. I think the Shadow Mission Infiltrator is a bit much, much to ask as well. Agree. Yes. Well, we we do well have if we're going to play white, we'll have the grave, the growth chamber, and the glacial fortress, and, and don't the forget the citadel. citadel. Well, that might and the Tarn glacier. So it it, it yeah, but we probably won't free. play an island. Um, but it might still be. Uh, yeah, we can still consider it. Uh, and it would also be a blue card for the Olsen Stone. <laughs> okay, cut that one. Um, okay, mold chamber is a six drop. Yeah, it needs to be arranged a bit. I don't think that this is going to be pretty useful at, at 5. Mm. Okay, the Headhunter is also not happening, I think. Um, Raven's Rats. No. The rest of the cards all look pretty solid. I mean, we still have this random Saurian in here, which is just yeah, you part of that one too. Um, and there are some stuff like like the Refoker, which has its really shining moments, but sometimes it'll just be yeah, two it's mana. It's, it's probably better in the sideboard because in game one, yeah, you have no idea what to name with it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess so. The question is, do we want to keep the white or not? Well, the white basically gives us now the Elspeth, the Mentor, and the Mother of Runes. Um, and I think they're almost free. We're getting two white sources in. Well, we don't want to play this one because I don't want to blue. I don't mean that this one's out, so. And fixing is uh, looking worse and worse as mm -hmm. you pro pro uh, progress. Yes. Oh, wait, if you got the blue, then we have to cut the infiltrator, so we have to at least keep on considering that. Um, but another question that's very important for the deck is how many lands do we want to play? Because we have a whole lot of cards that 
will augment our mana and we don't have a lot of things to do with it. So I think we might be considering playing 16 or even 15 lands in this deck. 16 seems okay. I, I think that would be the best bet. I mean, we still want to make use of the Oracle and if we take all of the lands out of the deck, then it kind mm. of defeats the purpose. That does mean that two cards need to be cut and if we cut all the white and blue cards, we can put the story uh, in. We need to uh, cut Everflowing Chalice. Probably doesn't do enough. I mean, we already have uh, quite a lot of uh, stuff that ramps us into three mana on turn, uh, four mana on turn three. Yeah, and, and these probably will do a better job of it as well because you know they're, yes. they're just they're just yeah, more and, 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 and four seems like enough. Yeah. Uh, so that's twenty five cards. So at the moment, yeah, we, you can't really cut all the all the white or black or and all blue cards because then you don't really uh, end up with enough playables anymore. And overall, the power of this deck seems a bit on the low side, so you probably need the non-green cards to uh, uh, at least have a chance. Mm. Um, is the Otter's Dust really what you want to do with this deck? It depends on which part you're taking. Um, I think it can be really good, especially against the, uh, the other aggressive decks, because there's not much worth wiping on our side. Um, but that said, there are also a lot of cards that, that you want to keep in play, like the Garrick and the Elspeth, and things like the Shadow Mage Infiltrator against the non-black deck. They just really take out their value, and all this does will become a dead card, because you don't want to lose those valuable cards in the process. And then it's more like a desperation move to not lose. Um, but if you're losing while you have Elspeth in play, then I don't think that all this dust is going to be the solution that's going to push you over the top anymore. So, it's uh, I think it could still be very good. But, th but we saw a Kozilek, it didn't come around, people are very fond of that card, so there are going to be a lot of big colorless creatures running around. Uh, there's also Sundering Titan in this draft, and uh, Lodestone Golem and stuff like that. And It can clear those up, and there could be potential problems if we do blow up our own Planeswalkers. Yeah, well, <coughs> it seems like this deck doesn't isn't that strong in the late game. It is, uh, it's also not a super fast aggro deck, but it's, uh, yeah, I guess, tries to win in a mid rangey type of fashion. I am not even sure what this deck is trying to do. Uh, uh, perhaps, perhaps just cut Shadow Mage Infiltrator. Mm, be a bit easier on the mana base. Um, yes, well, I don't think it affects the mana base. It's just that the Shadow Mage Infiltrator with only uh, three sources that we're going to have uh, is not well. Yeah, but one is Watery Grave, so that already counts as a black. You do, do need doubles. Mm. Uh, getting black is also not trivial in this deck, because all the search spells will probably search for planes as well. Uh, it just seems a bit difficult to uh, to cast, and it, it doesn't seem even seem all that good in the. No, there's the a deck. there's a pretty good chance you'll be facing a black deck or a deck with removals that can just deal with it and, and be done with it. Mm. Uh, so I guess this deck is now. Yeah, drawing some cards with Skolrek and Mentor of the Meek and Oracle of Muldai and Harmonize. And playing a bunch of slow threats and I, I, I don't know how this is winning, to be honest, but uh, we can try. Um, I guess the best chances are just ramping into uh, like a turn 3 Planeswalker and then somehow riding that to victory in combination with a Rectech team of kitchen things <laughs> and molten till mosty corn and a big mold mold chamber or something yeah well let's just uh, build a mana base yeah so if we're looking at we don't need the blue so i don't guess we don't need the watery grave or glacial fortress um we still have a simic growth chamber but the question is do we want it at this point it's uh, might be good with explore yeah it's, it's it still would, would help us accelerate might, a bit. might be good with skull deck might be good with Oracle Mold of Moldaya. And the Multitail Master Card. Yeah, probably just keep it in. And we have two, three lands that fix multiple colors. We have Tarn Glaciers and we have the Cardless Meter Vault. So if we include these six lands, we have ten basics to include. 
Okay, so add one swamp and two planes and, and seven forests. Yeah, so if you do that, you have uh, eleven green sources. That seems like more than enough. Ten would also be fine. So you might even cut a forest for either another swamp or another plains. Let's see. Probably the the plains. Like only these two cards that, that require black. Mm -hmm. um, so I think we'll be fine with a with single swamp and these two black sources and the wood elves and the search tomorrow and the tongue mm -hmm. glacier can fix that. So I think we might be benefited with another planes to get the moral runes out as soon as possible because she really needs to get out of seven seconds before she Yeah, we do have a double down. white card in Elspeth. So. And there's also the Elspeth, so might not be uh, irrelevant to have some planes. There we go. I'll just throw these in for 40 cards. And then we'll see how it goes. So the match will start right about now, so I'll just leave this running. Um, as I understood that you're going to work on your thesis a bit. So yep. you'll be uh, shouting from the sidelines. Indeed. So it means that um, I'll be doing the games with you. And um, if we want Frank's advice, then I'll just uh, hear him in the background mumbling about. And here we get our first hand of the day. And it gives us all the colors that we want. So it's pretty okay. We have the Putri Leafs we can cast in turn two, also explore and wood elves to ramp and don't forget scroll rack to just switch out the cards we don't want right now, like the others does. Um, so we're going to keep this. As you might notice, the layout of the beta has changed since the last update, so things are not where they're supposed to be. Uh, but you'll get used to it. I mean, I did. Okay, so our first draw is Mutavolt. I'll just start it with the Seaside Citadel. Another plane for our opponent. He's not really doing anything. So I just see we draw a swamp. And I think it would be best situation here to play the Putrid Leech and go aggressive. But I don't know what you're thinking about this. We could also do the explorer. Uh, but the extra land doesn't give us anything. And if we explore next turn, we can also play a spell wreck. Nah. And I'll just use the swamp to not take any damages. And we have the, 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 <laughs> the nice side effect that we actually look like an aggressive deck right now. An awkward aggressive deck because of the manas, but aggressive and all the same. Um, our opponent is uh, stumbling on two planes, not doing anything. This mold chamber is going to hit him very hard in the guts. So I'll just hit him with a leech. I'll pump him. If he has a removal spell like Condemn here, I, I don't mind him removing the leech. And uh, then we can choose between playing the explore and two lands and score wreck or we can play the wood elves and find a land and waste that mana as well so i think that it would be best to just play the explore and see where we end up uh, well, i would probably just play the wood elves it seems unlikely that you uh, uh, yeah i would rather just put as much power and words of creatures on the board <laughs> some wood elves wood elves so you can uh, just smash in for a lot of damage next uh, So, there we go. And this is the deck. We can <coughs> only take a regular forest. <coughs> and he has Knight of the White Orchid, which will give him an extra planes. And provide him with a blocker for a Mutafold should it attack. Oh, and his plane is Sacred Foundry. So, and he comes, let's come like that. He also drew a mountain. And has Goblin Guide. Which is actually awesome, because if it lets us hit some more land, then we'll have more cards for the scroll range. Uh, we have Mere Battlesphere on top. It says so right here in your field zone. Oh, here it is. It's our Mere Battlesphere. And we'll just take two damage from the Goblin Guide. 
Oh, here's this, the sphere that we drew. And now we get the interesting situation of what exactly we want to do. I think that he will try to take control of the tempo of this match because he is the aggressive Boros deck. Um, which what? is... He tricked us. Yeah, he tricked us. He tricked us good. Um, it does mean that racing with the Prince of Leech is... Yeah, it's, it's really nice. Mm -hmm. it's, it's really nice. Um, but we're still in, in the problem, do we want to race with the Portrait Leech or not? Because it's going to deal us a lot of damage. And this hand doesn't really provide us a lot of blockers for the Goblin Guard and the Knight of the White Orchids. So. We have a near Battle Sphere. Yes, but I... I would somehow try to uh, uh, play this turn in a way to maximize the chances of hitting 7 mana on the next turn. And then mm. you should be able to win from there. Well, we can always play Explore. Uh, then play the scroll rack and use the scroll rack with the five mana that we have, uh, and see if we can find a land in the top four cards. And if there are two lands there, we'll have seven mana. If we don't have two lands, then we'll have mulch. Seems fine. Probably just keep the three to back to block, right? Yeah, and we have secure tripelder as well, but I think it's still better to go for the scroll rack plan. So I'll just put down the scroll rack, we'll put down the overgrown too. We'll have to pay two life, but that's okay. Then we'll use the scroll rack. Uh, choose any number of cards. Well, we need the mere battle sphere. So I'll just put the tribe elder on the bottom. Oh, well, I'm, I'm going to put... It goes on the bottom, it goes on top. It goes on top, but I'm going to put all four cards uh, on top of our library. Yeah. Uh, it's just the order in which they appear. Oh, and now I get to choose the order. Okay, so you cannot cast the Battle Sphere on the next turn. So I just... Uh, well, it depends. We do have the or uh, Well, the Oracle doesn't help us yet. But we do do get the Mentor and the Kitchen things and a lot of things to do. So... We'll just uh, see what happens. <coughs> and maybe we're even buying a free turn if you can't attack into Portrait Leech. Then we just have bought ourselves free turn to do it, uh, anything we want. He didn't play anything before combat, but he does send his guys in. So the question is, what, what are he we going to do? The goblin guide he even sends the goblin guide no in. Respect, no respect. Af after he used uh, the scroll rack, it's just it's unbelievable. Um, I think I'm going to block the goblin guide, and I'm not going to pay any life. So the Goblin Guide will trade for a Portrait Leech or for his trick and soak up 2 damage. Mm, what is he? What kind of tricks can he have? Uh, he can have a whole variety of red burn cards. He can have the Lightning Bolt or Magma Spray or something like that and just blow the Leech out in response to the pump. Yeah, that seems perfectly fine actually because then he cannot use it on any of mm. the creatures that we're going to play in the next turn. So, block the Goblin Guide or the Knight? No, the put is not important, but we do lose the two life. But then again, any spells you're going to use on the put leech will probably will make us. You know, it spurts lightning, so he would have lost four life to that if he could resolve it. I mean, he loses a mana. Which is not completely irrelevant for his board state because he was missing on land wraps. What did you actually leave on top? The next card is the Mold Chamber. Uh, no, so, sorry, it's the Mere Battle Sphere still. Because we haven't run it yet. Yeah, that probably was not the ideal order in that. And here is Emiria Angel. So I am thinking we might actually invest in the turn to dust first. Okay, so now we have four cards, and we know three of the cards are on top. It are Secure Tribe Elder, uh, Mold Chamber, and All is Dust. So what we could do is play the Oracle, then scroll back away um, the three other cards. The it's the bottom card. The 
probably also was not the <laughs> ideal ordering. Uh, yeah. So we'll just yeah. use the scroll rack, yeah. put away these three cards. Uh, plan ahead uh, with more, uh, for more uh, turns the next time with the scroll rack. Because for the way you put back the cards, so it matters a lot. Yeah. So these cards don't matter because you're going to shuffle them away. Mm -hmm. So I'll just uh, I'll put the kitchen things on top anyway. This way we also have the mutaful to block if we really need to, but. That means we can't play all of that, so I'm not looking forward to that. comes his attack and the goblin guide has revealed the kitchen things but that really doesn't matter so I'll just jump the both of them and we'll use this to get ourselves a land uh, we don't have double white yet so I'm just going to take planes so if we actually draw Elspeth then we can cast Elspeth we go down to seven. And let's see if he's willing to commit something to the board to give us a bit more value on this test. Considering the, the high number of red cards we saw in the draft, I think he might be, uh, be holding back on some of the burn spells trying to finish us off with range. So we really can't take any more damage. Uh, we draw a forest. Which is okay, because then we can still use the scroll rack. Okay, so he has a response to all this dust, which is char on our face. So we go to three. I suppose that's bad news, but we'll have to see if he has a, a follow up for it. Yes, Hell Rider, so we're going to lose this game. And that's it. So we have a lot of sideboard options because we can play all of these cards. I think we wouldn't mind bringing in an extra early game creature like the Revoker. Um, I think actually Brooding Saurian might be an option here because it just has a lot of stats for its mana cost and can hold down a lot of them attackers. And the other cards, well this is a random 2-2 two -two for 3. I don't think we should be excited about that, but... <coughs> I 
let's look at what we can take out against this deck. Now we have um, some cards that are a bit slower, like the Rude Awakening, the Oddest Dust, the Battle Sphere, but I think they're still effective. I think the Sword might actually be one of the least effective cards, because he will have a lot of creatures and the protection doesn't matter against his colors. So I'm considering this to take out. Um, but otherwise I think that most other cards will probably do okay, I just think that these two will be a bit better, so I might take out the Rude Awakening as well. Just swap I would, out uh, these two cards. I keep the two. sword. Um, Wall Chandler seems so-so, but a Hill Giant is still good against him. Right? Works mm. a hell of a yeah, yeah. Um, You can probably cut... Yeah, perhaps the Rude Awakening in between the corner. Um, maybe Scroll Rack. It seems to be the card that gives us a lot of synergy in the deck, so I really want to keep it in to keep our options open. If it means we can dig to a card that will answer his cards like the Kitchen Things um, or the Primal Command, that probably will be worth it. Maybe we should cut... Well, this is also a two-power creature, so let's keep that in. Um, yeah, probably just cut the Wood Awakening for the Wooding Sword. Yeah. And just keep the Revoker in the sideboard as well. Yeah. I it, it don't really know what you would want to cut for it. You could cut a mold gem, but it seems fine. Well, uh, if, if the ability would be relevant, I think it would be a good trade. But since we don't know if you can name anything in his deck, I'll just keep it in the sideboard and see for game 3. It would be worth the while. So I'll just keep it like this for now and see if it helps if we're on the play. And we get um, a pretty worthless hand. Three forest two planes and two cards that we can't cast those five lands. So I'm going to mulligan this. And then we get a better hand. With at least something to do in the early turns. And the promise of mana development. So we'll keep this. And I'll lead that with the letter rails. Actually if we can get modern runes online against his deck it will be pretty good. But I think I'll just shoot it down before it uh, it can do anything. There's Mold Chandler. Um, I think I want to develop the Simic Road Chamber here. So I'm going to play Square Tribe Battle of the Lenora Elf. The one damage probably won't matter in this, in this scenario since we can't raise him. Night of Glory. And the real question now seems to be do we want to sacrifice the Tribe Elder? I think it's not really worth it. It, it can still prevent 3 damage if we block. We don't really need the mana next turn. Um, that said, we don't have white, so we can't play Mother of Runes. So we could search for our planes and play the Mother of Runes and hope that it holds out. But I think it's better to just prevent the additional 3 damage that we're going to get from Night of Glory next turn. And then play the Mother of Runes, hope it survives. And yeah, I would rather have death and play as soon as possible. Well, I'll, uh, I'll go your way on this and just search for planes. And did you start out with a mountain or with a. Oh, with, with the planes. planes. Okay. Well, it's still likely he had a mountain in his open hand. And but it, the fact that he didn't burn our Lalo Elf. In the case that he probably doesn't have burst lightning or something like that, mm -hmm. uh, which means that the modern foods is likely safe. Mm -hmm. so it's with yeah, it's a, it's a free attack right now. It's pretty much a good deal if he wants to trade it with his Knight of Glory, which really can't attack back because Kitchen Things will just block it. And he has Devil's Play for Mother of Runes. So it is going to die, but I'm not worrying about it too much. And we draw Oracle of Moldiah. 
So now we have the option of either playing the Mold Chamber with Kicker and taking out his planes, or we can play the Oracle of Moldaya and see if we can get some lands off the top for that to smooth out our draws. Uh, mold Chamber. It seems like the best play, especially since he has a lot of power for four drops. He has Maria Angel, he has Hell Rider. Uh, if you can delay those for a turn, that's a pretty good deal. And we can always get some extra value from the, from the Oracle afterwards. It also allows you to keep on attacking. Yeah, we'll just send in the kitchen things right now. If he wants to trade it for the Knight of Glory, that's okay. Uh, but I think it's just going to take three damage, and he does so. <coughs> he had another plane, he has Kaim of Ancient Law, which is basically just another bear. going to attack with Knight of Glory and I think I'm just going to take 3 damage. Uh, we'll go down to 19, we're still at a pretty solid range and we can attack back for more. I'm not really all that afraid of the Knight or his Exalted ability. We draw all his dust, should defense turn in his favor again. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't block with his Kami, which is pretty good for us. I'll just put the Oracle down, see what we get on top, and we get Mentor to Meek on top. Combo with Kitchen Things. Yeah. Does it work? Is it uh, comes back? Uh, yep, it works. If we have the mana, then we can draw the card. <coughs> so I'll have to see if it's one of his powerful four mana cards right now. It could be Hell Rider, it could be Maria Angel. And it's Angelic Destiny for a really big knight. It still needs three turns to kill us, so we have a lot of time yet to f find an answer to it. We basically already have the answer in the form of all this dust. We just need a single more land for that. Uh, we have Seaside Citadel on top, so we'll just play that. It's for free. We have Search for Tomorrow as the next card. Not really exciting, but that's okay. If we attack him with everything, he'll just block lower else. That's not a good deal if you block if you attack with the rest. Um, he could trade for the Oracle, he'll take 6, go to 4, that's a good outlook for us. Um, so we'll at least do that. Yeah. Why is attacking with the Lawn or else a bad deal? Uh, because he can just block it with the Kami. Yeah, that seems fine. The but then we can't cast all his dust next turn should we need to. Looks like you're trying to raise, not to cast, all this dust. Uh. Well, I, I think that considering his deck, there probably are some. Well, let's see if he doesn't kill us next turn, we'll be on 5. It's probably out of reach of his burn spells. And uh, on his backswing, he would have dealt us 8 and we'd go to 4, so then we would be in char range. Except we still could block with the Mentor of Meek, so... It might have been better to just also attack with Lenore Elves and hope that he blocked that. Oh, but it doesn't matter because he has Silverblade Paladin. <laughs> <coughs> so he's just going to give a double strike and it will die to the Knight this turn. Yeah, so that was uh, <laughs> that was this cube draft, and we lost pretty um, pretty easily to to the Boros deck. Um, partly probably because our deck wasn't really any good; it was severely unfocused and didn't have any of the of the good synergies that you can have. Um, so yeah, that was a draft with Frank, and didn't go very well. So I uh, hope that you uh, could still learn a bit from our chaotic talks in between and I'll see if I can uh, do a better one next time okay so welcome to another draft uh, this time once again with Frank um, and we have uh, a new booster okay let's do a better draft uh, yeah, this time yeah it's uh, a very solid idea let's uh, especially watch this timer <laughs>
There's already a nice build around card in Crucible of Worlds. Mm -hmm. That has upside. Also, Tendrils of Agony, but I haven't seen many cards that make the strong deck work and will probably wheel, so whatever. Um, a Johnny Goldmane, a Planeswalker, always fine. Mox Diamond, always well, usually playable. Um, I think I like the Crucible best, especially yeah. with uh, so the abundance of fetches, and there are Strip Mine and Wasteland in here, so. Yeah. It's and, with, and, and with stuff like Wildfire. Uh, it's it's a card that yeah. you can easily uh, build a deck around and uh, yeah seems good. Then we have yeah, well just a plan. We already have more of plan than we did a moment ago. So this is a pretty strong booster. Indeed. Uh, we have destructive so force to go with crucible. Yeah. Uh, we also have crypt command, Tarma guy, senses defining top, and windswept heat, which I think are the contenders. There is a good white weenie team here, but that we should consider that yet. And there's always Acidic Slime, which is a, a very decent card. Um, the Crucible left us pretty open, color-wise, so we can still go any which way. I think the Destructive Force will come around if we really want it. I, I really love me uh, Sensei's Divining Top, but I don't think it is the, the pick here. Um, the Cryptic Command might be one of the better cards, but very difficult on the mana. Um. Oh yeah, oh. 10 seconds left. I think the Curse Command is a good pick because it's a really strong card. Um, it gives us a lot of options and we can actually stay in two colors. Uh, it's not hard to do. And getting a blue something control deck is probably very good. Here we have an Armageddon. That just probably well. a, g a good pick for, for the Crucible. Um, there's also the future side which hopefully comes around. It would fit well with within a blue white control deck or a blue black control deck. Um, and the rest of these cards are pretty unexciting. I mean, I wouldn't object against having an Elspeth if we go blue white. Um, but I think the Registers of War is the best card here. If you have the Crucible, then we can make it work, and we can probably pick up some artifact mana sources to supplement the mana base for when we don't take the Crucible. Sure. I do have to say that a Cryptic Command Armageddon deck seems a bit awkward, but I also don't really see what else to uh, pick out of this. Um. Well, we can always choose to not play the Cryptic Command. Sure. It's a bit of a waste of a pick, but then at least no one else will have it. Here there's powerful source of closures. There's two fetches in here that might be interesting for us. Yeah, we do need to pick fetches relatively high yeah. due to the Crucible. Um. I come to think, to, uh, was there actually a fetch land in the pack with the Cryptic Command? That might have even have uh, been a good pick as no, well. No, there, there wasn't. There was uh, just there Forest Stronghold. There's also Worn Power Stone. It's like uh, solving. It works. Yeah, it, it supplements the Ravages of War. Because it, uh, it will still have access to mana. I would probably either pick a fetch land or a Worn Power Stone. Mana is well, always important. I think that the fetch land would be better. Uh, simply because it will straighten out our mana a bit. Sure. And the parts are not do that. So, here we have some interesting cards. Uh, I think Forbidden Alchemy might show us a bit of synergy with the Crucible of Worlds. And this Weathered Wayfarer, which is pretty good with the Ravages of War, since you can just stock up on lands, just blow it all away, and then play the lands that you kept in your hand. I do find the Unburial, unburial Rites. Uh, well. It's interesting. Um, well, the Umbrella Rights is the advantage over all the other reanimate cards that's still just playable as a late game card to bring a fatty back. So you just have two or three creatures to face the game, you have the Umbrella Rights to, to complement those creatures should they die. Mm. And a card like Reanimate doesn't really have that, it's just too limited in use. I would probably pick Forbidden Alchemy or Unburial Rights. I'll, uh, I'll go for the Forbidden Alchemy, see sure. if we can really make the Crucible work. Yeah, we might wield the Imperial Rites, in that case mm -hmm. it would be a sign that uh, it's open. So here we have Rocky Terrapit, which is Fetchland, and Sphere of the Sun, which Mana Fixing, and a lot of cards you probably don't want in this deck. And I think it would be one of the two Mana cards. And Yes. I'd be inclined to take the Sphere of the Sun since Rocky Therapy doesn't fix any of our mana yet. Sure. Yeah. Here we get 
Gideon as Planeswalker and a couple of mediocre cards. Highly more depth uh, might be good. I mean, you get uh, the common play effect and then you destroy it with Ravages of War and then you get it back wow. with Crucible. All the value. So good. Well, it's an option. I think it's better than most of the cards. I think it would be between the Hellmer Depths or maybe the Gideon. I don't know how good the Gideon is. I think in the creature I have a format it could have some value, but I don't really know. I would probably just pick the land. And here we have uh, Linvala, which is pretty good because it locks down a lot of the aggressive creatures, um, both by having a good body and also by just having a disabling ability. And the other cards, I think Nightfield Spectre is really neat, but it's a bit awkward to play. It has the same mm. problem as this Cryptic Command has. Sure, but it fits with the Cryptic Command in the sense that you get into like kind of a heavy blue deck. It has some upside. Yeah, and we could be setting ourselves up for a lot of fixing anyway with Crucible and, uh, yeah. and the Lake fetches. of the Dead, Fear of the Suns. It's probably horrible, but uh, it's a combo. Yeah, but this is not as bad as it would seem because sacrificing swamps is not really a big deal if we have Crucible of Worlds. Yeah. So it will give us a lot of mana, but it's... But imagine you draw Lake of the Dead without having Crucible yeah, of Worlds. That's a bit of a shame. There is the Coral Home Commander, which is a very efficient creature. I think he's a bit better than Ayani in a deck like this because yep. we don't really. Good. And here we get this booster again. The entire white weenie team is wheeling around. There's also Destructive Force. Yeah, that seems to be the best for this deck. So I'll just take this one. Yep. It's what we were planning to wheel. Yep. So yeah, it's, it's a good so card. We would really need to tuck on the mana base a bit then, because we're going three color mm. with doubles and triples. But sure, so take the Battlefield Forge. Yeah, it's Perfect. A good pick. And here we have Pact of Negation, which doesn't seem to be all that good <laughs> with all the land destruction effects. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, I think it's still better than the other three cards, so we could just take it and see if it will make the deck or not. Is Hive Mind in the cube? Then you can uh, write. No, it's. Uh, I don't believe it is. <laughs> uh, then it would be a combo with the land destruction effect. Yeah. Um, yeah, all this is bad. We'll Just we'll pick the land it. or well, whatever. We'll pick the land. And here we can take Spectral Procession. Mm. Or the Elkite. That boat seems a bit awkward. Yeah, no, too late. Yeah, we're not going to play that anymore. So at the moment we're mono blue with <laughs> Battlefield Forge and Lanoir Wastes or something. Yeah, it's uh, it's a better start than the last one, but it's still awkward. And we're once again opening a Kozilek. Uh There's the Monarch Tutor in this booster, so I think we just have to take that. Mm. Palinchron? Yeah, well, we don't really have any combos with it. No, we I need am not even sure there are many combos. Uh, we need to pick it. up multiple of these to make it to make it work, and then it's just yeah. a four or five flyer that gives you a bit of a discount on your next spell. Probably not good enough. For fellows, is really good, but yeah, not for this deck. No, it's. Um, yeah, I guess it's the monarch tutor. Seems fine. I think it's the best card. Uh, we could consider taking the bonfire. To supplement the red parts, but I think it's just asking for a complicated mana base yeah, at this point. We should have taken the Senses Divining Top, then we could have taken the Bonfire. <laughs> <laughs> and here we get Tamiyo, and I really love Tamiyo. It's, I think it's my favorite Planeswalker after Gideon. Um, there's also the very fine Kaiga. There are a couple of removal spells in James Edict, and Chaos Warp, sort of. And Volcanic there's, Island, uh, there's Volcanic great. Island to fix. Well, if you like uh, Tamiyo, then uh, feel free to uh, pick it. I think it's one of one of the better cards to have, especially if you're going for a land destruction plan. Tamiyo can still help on that part by just stepping out on the land. Sure. And here we get this. 
so show and tell into the garden hell kite <laughs> maybe we wheel the cozy leg well, that doesn't seem but to I'm not sure it's the the best pick there are so not a lot of lot of options for this booster I mean there are these these two blue guys that we could take palladium mirror might also be uh, be good it'll certainly help us get to the seven mana or then again, ramping with a creature into a destructive <laughs> force also seems a bit uh, contradictory. Uh, uh, yeah, how many instants or sorceries do we have for the augur already? Mm. Right now, Not the that tutor, many. the alchemy, the refs for the cryptic uh, command. So so. Don't really want to count that. But we should also. Some part of me wants to take the show and tell. Just go for the whammies. Yeah, well Try to get there. But we'll just get it. We have a demonic tutor as well you know, to make it work. Indeed, maybe we get a sneak attack and then some other cards. Yeah. And it, it would be pretty amazing. Well here we get a very good Arcane Sanctum, or perhaps Day of Judgment. Eh, I like the land. I think the Sanctum would benefit us more. I'm not sure. You, uh, at, at this point I don't see how you're going to easily get double hmm. white in the, into your deck. And if you still want to be able to cast a Nightfall Spectre in this deck... Uh, yeah, you're going to yeah. need lands like this. But um, still we should, I mean we have these two red cards, we should always consider not playing them because this seems to be true, true. a solid control deck already if we take out the show and tell. Or maybe even the show and tell would be really good if we get some more high end planeswalkers. But it, it's also a bit of a shame to play show and tell and refuse of war because it kind of invalidates the wildfire. That would, good. would be an incentive to go to go red again. There's also just decent fixing in Watery Grave or maybe she can read if we wanted that. So this is basically, I guess this is the point where you have to decide if we want to go for the Wildfire land structure plan or just stay on solid as for control deck. Um, well, if it weren't for Wildfire, I would uh, probably uh, try to go for the Exhum and uh, go for Exhum, Show and Tell, <laughs> Fetty, the animator deck. Um, but it seems that wildfire fits the rest of your deck better. You do need some, yeah, probably some additional sphere of the sun type cards for vamping, but yeah, it seems like a plan. Still have one and a half booster to get there, so. And here we have a lot Just of unexciting take cards. Take the of Basilica. Yeah, it seems to be the best card. It'll fix us up a little. Will cost us one less land than the refuge is four. And then here we have a couple of cards that could be good. There are some fixers like for example Summit, Mountain Valley. There's also Jace, which is pretty good, and Misdirection is okay. I would take Dragon Skull Summit. It's a red mana that still allows you to play the Nightfall Spectre. Yeah. Well it's it's just mana fixing in general. Yeah. yeah. We're, we're pretty we were almost certainly already going to splash the demonic tutor. And yeah. I like it. Yeah, we'll just take it. And here we get another of the fetch lands that gets us green. Um, there's also spreading seas, which is uh, a decent cantrip that can uh, can just blockade an opponent. Um, I don't really like spreading seas. I think the grasslands would be better, but it can only fix us planes, and we don't have any non-basic planes yet, so. Question is how Does valuable Gamble it help be. in any way? Nah. Mm, probably not. It'll probably be just exactly what the card no, says a gamble. We could consider the Cloud Goat Ranger. In four seconds, just but take just the seas. Yeah. And here we have a couple of green fixers once again. Um, and all the other cards are pretty unexciting. There is extra sort of immortality which can gain us a bit of life but doesn't really work with the crucible. Flash freeze for the sideboard. There's flash freeze for the sideboard. I think it's the best option. And here we get another booster. The jungle's trying to fix is our white and our and our red. Um there's also friction arena, but it's double black. And I don't think the other cards are very enticing. So we could just take the jungle shrine and Sure. And have to double fixing. And here we have. This is more planes. We don't really want no, more planes. So um, basically, the spectre, I guess. 
Yeah, I could go for the X spells, but I oh, I'll just take the Spectre. It has it has more fight. Yeah, it has yeah, more. Okay, so and it, it's, it's actually a pretty cost. solid creature if you go down in the control matchup. Mm -hmm. um, um, yeah, we have any new explosives. It's removal. We have access to a lot of cops, so I think that's okay. Sure. We could take the Rock Prairie to fix mana, but I don't think that we really need white and red at this point because we already have mm -hmm. uh, three red sources and we only have one white card yet, so. Yeah, the reanimation team is probably not going to happen with Nunas Prowler, but. Oh. I'll, I'll take it anyway, the other cards are worthless. Yes! Yes! <laughs> and Fire Blast. So basically we're looking at a mono blue deck that splashes white, red and black. We have a very awkward lower waste here still, I don't think that's going to make the deck. But the other fixing is all pretty decent, I mean this is just an island. We could do with, a, with, with maybe... Might need some uh, mana fix, oh not, not mana fixing, uh, creatures with conditions. Yeah. So yes, Ajani. There's an Ajani, which is pretty good. In the wind condition department, um, all of the other cards are probably not not as good as the Nope. So I'll just take it. It's a bit awkward on the mana, but I can probably get it to work. Yeah, and I don't think it's more awkward than, than the Wildfire and the Doctor Force are. Especially if you're going to play Show and Tell. <laughs> show and Tell as a mana fixer? I like <laughs> it. Actually, I don't think we can put in the planeswalker to play with the uh, what? show and tell now. What? <laughs> it's just uh, that they are the creature sham with the land, so it'll be the hellkite of bust. But yeah, we, we do only have four creatures, and they are the Corlham commander and Spectre and the other Spectre, so mm -hmm. we're going to need to pick up a win condition somewhere. So here we have nothing really interesting, I guess. Yeah, Supreme Verdict, Speech Removal. There is Animate Dead. If you're lucky with the Forbidden Alchemy, Neil Bogard and Hellkite, then you can just <laughs> get it back. There's also Avenue Riders, which can support the Wildfire Plan, I suppose. And yeah, you can destroy your own Hellamore Dead and then get it back with oh, the yeah, Crucible for the value. But, um, but no. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Supreme Verdict just seems very difficult on a man, yeah. even though it's a good card. You could, I, you could always take I would garrison. honestly uh, take the animate that. It's there, there, there's still a chance of getting a good booster uh, with some reanimation cards, mm. even though you don't have a lot right now. But you can you can get creatures from your opponent's graveyard as well, right? So yeah, it's, yeah, it's, 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 it's always playable, it seems. There's and now there's the animate. animate. Yeah, yeah, well, <laughs> we can take uh, it, what else is there? May maybe we should just take the Polluted Delta or Factor Fiction. Yeah, Polluted Delta seems to be best for the land plan. There's mm. indeed Factor Fiction, Esper Charm, which are better draw spells. And Bane there's Slayer, Bane Slayer, Slayer if you need win condition. But um, I would probably take Polluted Delta or Factor Fiction, yeah. those seem better. I think the Delta would be best to just make the Crucible work if we don't have, in, in the early game even. Here's balance, pretty powerful card, but I think the decree might be more what we're looking for. It's mm, not really. The decree doesn't seem to do that much for our deck. But it is a win condition. Um, I mean, at one point we we're probably not going to lose too many lands to these effects. I mean, balance in a way is a red of God for a two mana that yeah. we would like. Um, it also works pretty well with the Basilica and uh, any other bound sense that we might pick up. Uh, I, I'm not sure the key of just is really what you want also in a deck with Destructive Force and Wildfire. I would be inclined to take the balance, even though it's not ideal. And uh, here we have maybe Underground River or Ultimate Price. So we get basically another non-basic land or a removal spell. We could take the Murmuring Bus because it's fixed as white and black, but I don't think that we really need a lot more fixing in the department. I would like another red fixing, but 
that's about it. Seems like this deck is lacking effects such as Ultimate Price. I c actually, I'm not even sure what this deck is trying to do uh, really at the moment. I think it's going to go uh, for very long games and then hope a Chani sticks. Let, let's take mm, the Ultimate Price in any case. No. It does seem to be the card that would be best. Oh, there's a Sorin here. That's okay as far as conditions go. Everflowing Chalice also seems strong in uh, this deck. Yeah. So we basically have to decide if we want to go for. A Obviously, bit more Planeswalkers with Balance is a strong combination. Hmm. Um, we do need win conditions in some way. I could see both. I think I'd rather go for Soren at this point because I really have no faith in the in our creatures pulling it off. Mm -hmm. Um, so you need to have Planeswalker to win this. And I think even if, if you land a Planeswalker and can do one of these spells to turn after, um, then we're going to win the game regardless. Yep. There is the Tonic Edge, which is very good with the Crucible, and we have the Badlands for the rest of the one. So I think... I looking at the mana base, I actually prefer Badlands. Mm -hmm. I think we're going to need it as well to just sort out the manas. So I'll just, uh, just take the Badlands. I mean, Crucible right now is mainly meant to combo with Wildfire and Destructive Force. Mm. I mean, you might not even need the Tectonic Edge. Um, is, is it Boilerworks? It could be good. And Tomb. Well, we, we don't really have much Fetties. We just have mm. one Animate Dead. Though we do have the Demonic Tutor, so it is kind of a plan. Yeah, if we can um, only get Garden Hellkite. Yeah, that's true. So this is actually a good booster for us. It's a pity we only get to take one card. Yeah, we the Cursor Golem might be a win condition. The mm. Boiler works. Or Desperate Ravings. All of them seem fine. Yeah. I, I think I will, I'll set up for the Boiler works and go for the internal synergy of the deck. And here we get maybe Phantoms here or Snap Out. Snap Out of course is to have a Swamp. I don't see us playing too many of those. Mm -hmm. I mean, there will always be the Badlands that we can get with the Delta. And the Arid Mesa. And the Arid Mesa. So we can get a Swamp, that's not the problem. Uh, can we, will we ever be able to activate a Phantom Seer? We're not going to play all it's the It's a nice game. combination with Ravages of War. Yeah. In a way. Uh, I think it has more nice. payoff than the stuff out. Mm -hmm. I'm too slow. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, there's another Bounce Land. For this Boris Garrison. I think that the other cards just aren't a real good fit for this deck, so the Garrison might just provide us with a little bit more stability. Sure. And I really still like how these lands work with, with balance. I so we, we get the Fact of Fiction and Jesper Charm back. Yeah, Fact of Fiction seems be best. Fact of fiction. The balance lands also work so you can discard on turn two and then animate that back the Bogardan Hellkite hmm. or Silent Spectre if need be. Uh, sh I don't think I need to. Uh, um, I don't think we mind any of these cards, so I'll just take the most aggressive one. So the lines, a blocker. Yeah. Oh, and this is actually a pretty good card still. So once again, we have a pretty awkward deck. Yes. But at least this deck has a plan. <coughs> that said, it uh, could have used some additional uh, mana ramp. Right now, it seems quite slow. Yeah, it is. I'll just take it out the lands again. And these are 25 <coughs> cards. I think that the Pact of Negation is not going to make it. No. I think we might actually want to play 18 lands in this deck. Seems fine. Um, so we need to cut two more yeah, cards. Yeah, Una's Prowler is not uh, gonna do it. And then we have the Animate Dead. I think Animate Dead is still good. Yeah, it's, it provides us with a way to get a creature from the board. Maybe we should just cut the show and tell. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah cut that one. <laughs> yeah. Okay, done. <laughs> <laughs> So um, then, then this yeah. basically is it. And let's see how the fixing turns out. This is just an island. 
fixing and then we have two fetches. Okay, so can you just add all the lands to the deck so I can see how many basics we can still add? It's uh, seven <laughs> more <laughs> okay. basics. And uh, there, there goes uh, the nice ordering. Oh well. Um, okay, so how many white sources do we have at the moment? Oh, yeah. one, this one. one, two, three, four, five. This is not a white source. Six. Six white sources. Well, actually, the Avid Misa only uh, does something if we play a planes, yeah. which we probably should. Okay, so add the basic planes, and then that should be enough white. Um, for red, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and. <coughs> Then you we also have the Sphere of Sons for... Uh, yeah, yeah. And Demonic Tudor fixer. can also act as a mana fixer. Yeah. Um. yeah, you might want to add one more mountain, such that the, the Erit Misa, if you uh, have it with the Crucible, can, uh, can fetch more lands. Yeah. Um. <coughs> It's not even completely necessary, but an Eric Misa with only two lands to fetch is a bit uh, weak. Um, <coughs> so next, uh, black. We yeah. have this one, this one, this one. Only six. And which black cards do we have? We have more than just Silent Spectre and so on. Yeah, we have uh, a so couple a of the early game removals. Not too much. Mm. And the Spectre will always cost double black, even if used morph, so... Yeah. It'll usually probably be just be one of those dorks. <laughs> um, yeah. We'd probably like to add two swamps. I'm not sure whether we end up with uh, mm. enough islands. But uh, just add two for now. Mm -hmm. Leaves us with three islands. Uh, our blue sources are this one, the border works, the delta. They're <laughs> pretty low on the blue sources. This is the blue source. Um, well, let's start with three <laughs> islands and then uh, try to fit uh, some additional uh, blue mana in the deck because. Yeah. This uh, isn't enough. <laughs> Uh, no, far from it. Not if you want to cast Cryptic Command. We need a lot more. I mean, spreading mm. seas could uh, <laughs> act as a mana fix for yeah. ourselves. <laughs> um, we will probably actually use that. Um, yikes, this mana. Well, let's start by cutting a swamp for an island. can cut the mountain or the plains or maybe it would be better to just cut the battlefield forge instead yeah I looked at uh, that as well you do run into the issue that you don't have you might not have enough white or red but indeed having blue is uh, uh, more important you also want to if, if we yeah we pretty much have to play the nightfall specter you want to minimize the number of lands that don't produce blue or black and probably Battlefield Forge is the worst uh, one. Jungle Shrine is also not ideal given that we already have three of the bounce lands no, and, and an Arcane Sanctum um, So we might actually want to cut Jungle Shrine instead of the Forge just to get another land that can play on that Yeah, possibly Now we have eight blue sources. That's still 
No, it's more, right? It's, it's nine. nine. Sorry, yeah. Plus a crucible. Uh, not uh, the... Uh, Spreading seeds. Uh, not the sphere of the sun. That's the uh, one I meant. Um, actually, we don't even have a lot of blue cards. It's just very blue intensive in yeah, Atlanta. It's to equip the command, it's to crawl on commander. The Nightfield Spectre can actually munch a lot of black sources off of the other lands. What if we cut like Cryptic Command and Coral Helm Commander? Which actually looks kind of out of place in the deck anyway. Just play uh, things like the Prowler and the Card of Fate. <laughs> the Card of Fate. <laughs> actually, we also um, have Mirror Crusader as the final alliance. Which might be. which might be better. Um, yeah, but this most awkward mana. Yeah, you cannot really add Savannah Lines and Mirror Crusader in the to the deck and then still be able to cast a Nightfall Spectre, I think. Um, we could always consider Skeletus Crying as a useful draw spell. It's not the best, but... Nope. Uh, or just play 20 lands. No, I, I, I think the we probably have to take a gamble with the mana base of this deck, because mm. all in all the deck doesn't seem super exciting, and yeah, just keep in the Crypto Command, and I guess the Coral, the Coral, the Coral Helm Commander. Uh, just level up, level up on colorless. So you only need two blue to get it on the table. And True. That uh, pretty much goes up. But even then, it's it's very mana intensive. It's not even all that uh, great. No, it's just it's a solid creature, but it's not be nothing beyond that. It will die to the wildfire and destructive force. Mm. And the balance. Yeah. You um, might actually play the nineteenth land. Just add another island in this. I don't think that we can have too many lands in a setup like this. We really need to hit every land that we can. And we really want to blow up the world a lot, so... I would be fine with a 19th land. Especially since the mana is so horrendous. And would you like another island or Return the Jungle Shrine? I think an island might be best. Um, well, maybe Return the Jungle Shrine. It will still be a bit iffy on Cryptic Command, but... Well then, let's see what this does. Yeah, well, maybe an island after all. There we go. Well, just under a minute to go, so let's submit this and see how it goes. Now, by removing jungle spam, we, we can't put an explosives on five. Ooh. It's horrible. It's horrible. Well, we also have Nightfall Spectre, so we might hit some uh, some green cards. And, uh, oh, yeah. oh uh, now we only have Sphere of the Suns to do that. We can always sideboard in. Like yeah. yeah, if you Perfect. play against the green deck and oh, stealing wild cattles and just having them be big. Okay, so this is the first hand, and I think it's <laughs> it's still pretty decent. <laughs> we have the explosives to take on the early game if they try to overwhelm us, and Factor Fiction can get us some card advantage while we wait for Wildfire to kick in. So yeah, it's a good thing our deck is built. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, if we can su survive until uh, turn six, the wildfire is going to uh, be good. But uh, um, I was thinking, didn't you want to uh, crack polluted delta to it's in the deck already? It's not like you really want to draw any lands with uh, your current hand. Well, I'm, I'm wondering what. Um, I mean, you would uh, probably get an island or something. Or, yeah, I think an island. If we can look for Badlands, but I don't think that we need that right now. With but the well, that, that doesn't matter. So. so I think we'll just play the Garrison. No, or would, would you develop the Blue Delta? Probably, because then you can uh, blow up the Lotus Cobra on the next turn while mm. playing a Boris Garrison. If you play the Boris Garrison this turn, you won't have accomplished anything by the next turn. And... 
I think turn two explosives, turn three blow up, turn four Ajani mm. will give you some chance, but if the Cobra is still there when the Ajani comes down, uh, it's not going to be uh, pretty. It does mean we'll have to get bad lands out of this, uh, of this delta. Uh, yeah, sure. Well, now let's Besides, see now we don't have to uh, discard. <laughs> it would only be good if we had a garden now, okay. Let's see what he has. He has a cruel turf. That's acceptable, yeah. It's, it means he'll have a bit more land when the wild fire goes off and he probably can keep his cruel turf. But if we have a Johnny, we can just keep the cruel turf down with that. And yep. Still be in pretty good shape. He doesn't do anything else. So. We'll just blow up. Venom <laughs> <Fed him, fed laughs> Seer <laughs> with his mana base. Oh, wow. Well, we do have five islands. Yeah, true. Just I mean, I guess the main the use of Phantoms here. Uh, yeah, sure. It doesn't really matter much in this case. Our next turn plays probably a Chinese Vengeance, whatever happens. Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess the main use of the Phantoms here is to uh, uh, well act as a one-tree blocker against aggro decks. <laughs> no, well, turn <coughs> two. It's yeah, it's, it's pretty it's good. good. Here he comes Primal Command. He's going Hello. to put our scarce uh, garrison on top and. And he's going to look for a creature carrot. So let's see what he's getting. Yeah, against decks with primal command, I usually uh, like to board out any bounce lands. Wonderful. Unfortunately, we have three of them. And yeah. Uh, so we troop up Boris Garrison. Um, I think we would just play the island instead of one of these lands. He's he looked for blood gift demon, so he's going for a mid range plan. Yeah, demon. this is not looking good. We're unlikely to ever uh, use the the morph cost of phantoms here at this point. R um, so we're going to lose to the blood gift demon at some point. Well, what we have to do is to find an, a timely answer with we either Forbidden Alchemy or Fact or Fiction. We have Johnny. Yeah, and how know is that exactly going to help? Well, we can block it down, but he's going to draw a bunch of cards. Yeah, but then we can just wildfire the demon away two turns after. Um, so eventually we yeah, already have Yeah, but that's going card. to take uh, a while. Hmm. Um, do we have answers to Blood Gift Demon in our deck? Yeah, we have Ultimate Price and Balance. Mm-hmm. So we could actually play the garrison um, um, next we turn. We should uh, make sure alchemy. to be able to cast Forbidden Alchemy on the next turn to be able to find like a turn four answer if uh, at all possible. So, we'll, so yeah. we'll just play one of the bounce lands, take back the bad lands, discard I suppose the Phantoms here. Uh, yeah, let's see, uh, maybe, maybe, maybe the bad lands, but... Um, no, probably the Phantoms here. Or perhaps even the Orts of Basilica, but we might still want to use that later. Yeah, we were. No, th this seems fine. This we're seems probably fine. going to need the lands anyway if, if we're going to win this. Yep. So he's going to take out his demon. Yep. And he has another land, Sanctuary. At least the demon is caught in a monsoon. Hmm? The demon is? Caught in a monsoon. Oh, yeah. It's, it's All these beta animations. It's the, it's the summoning sickness. Yeah. So now we'll just hope we'll find an answer for the, uh, for the blood gift demon with forbidden alchemy. If that doesn't work, we'll just stall it with a giant engine and see if it holds. And then ramp up to the wildfire and reset the board.
Yeah, balance would be uh, pretty good here. Because we're also behind. Okay, well, not if he has, uh, has ever flown challenge, but because we're behind on uh, on lands, he's probably going to dump out a bunch of additional creatures. Mm -hmm. And we do have both uh, balance and the modic tutor that we can get off the forbidden alchemy. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we probably need a balance. Um, oh. Well, let's see. Because right now wildfire is not an out anymore. Oh yeah, nice thing. And this is what we're getting. Okay, so we'll make sure that the Bogard and Hellkite goes to the graveyard, because if we draw animate that, yeah. well that's probably still not good enough, but it's something. Um, cryptic command with our <laughs> current <laughs> mana. <laughs> I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it, it might actually buy us a turn, but... Uh, we, we can cast it in two turns if you played the Arcane Sanctum and draw a of source. <laughs> I, I guess Cryptic Command is actually the card to uh, to take, even though it's horrendous. But uh, yeah, it, it's just gonna act as a fog for one turn while from now, allowing us to dig deeper for the balance or something. Me. Yeah. Well, let's hope we just get lucky and draw it. But we get Dragon's Call Summit. Instead. Perfect. Okay, so uh, I guess a Johnny Vengeance to tap down the Grave Titan. No, it doesn't do that. It oh just right. keeps it permanent depth, like but it doesn't. Uh, right. We have um, to. Do, we we can't just sit on factor fiction because it'll just deal. It'll have little with the 15 damage on board. Um, it's only 10. If we tap down Bloodgift Demon, maybe he'll get distracted and kill a Johnny. Yeah, we don't have any him. option, right? We can Lightning Helix a zombie. Uh, uh, that still kills us. The only option that keeps us alive is Johnny Vengeance. Tap down the demon. Uh, it'll it'll give us more life in any case. I mean, if, if we do Lightning Helix... Uh, oh no, it, it's, it's Lightning Helix, of course. Yeah, then, then we go to so 2. And now we also go to 2, unless he uh. redirects to Achani. Yeah, I guess the Lightning Helix might even be better than... It saves one life point, does it? No, we'll go to 15. He'll have 5 plus 6 is... 11 plus 2 is 13, we'll go to 2. If you keep this tapped, he'll attack for 10, we'll also go to 2. Except that if we tap, it'll have 4 loyalty and it'll take 2 zombies instead of 1 to kill it. But if no. you kill a zombie, there'll be 1 less zombie to attack. So in the end, it's Makes perfectly sense. probably moot. Uh, yeah, we still need to top deck in any way. So uh, I but think yeah. the Lightning Helix might be a bit safer, he'll be down one creature. Yep. Maybe he'll give us with the blood gift demon. Nah, it doesn't fall for it. So we, we basically need to draw the balance now to, uh, to still stay in this game. Yeah, that primal command was... that really wrecked us. Yeah, it was a double time warp for him. Mm -hmm. More zombies. We're going to four and Jenny dies. Kinda like we predicted. We'll get elephants. <laughs> well, who knows? He didn't even use his chalice. Yeah, we we have we have elephants. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we will go try this again next game. So, is there anything that we want to board in? Well, certainly don't board in the show and tell. Well, I think the Marine Crusader might be of some worth, like for black and green. We only saw black and green threats, so. Even if it still comes on turn 5 or 6, it can still hold back the rest of the day. Even with our mana base. Time. Yeah, well. Um, we do need something. Flash freeze might be good. Act of negation might actually be good against uh, him. Um, 
could go for the aggro route with Stefan on the lines and Chronophage, <laughs> but nah, probably not but worth it. Uh, he, he did show that he had some early game for a Lotus Cobra and stuff. Mm -hmm. And they'll get completely shut down once he gets to his Great Titan or Blood Gift Demon. Oh, yep. this, these spells offer some some pretty good protection. Um, just a question what we're going to take out. I think that you know, Silent Specs might actually be good against him because it's a, an early game creature. If we yeah, can get it I in for so. 4 damage, it'll work pretty nice with anime death and with big guys. Mm -hmm. So we, we could discard out the Phantoms here. Yeah, Doesn't Phantoms here can go uh, out, that's fine. Seems to be a pretty good uh, card. Um, yeah, I'm not entirely sure about the Wildfire and the Destructive Force, because, well, they uh, don't solve Grave Titan. At the same time, they yeah. kind of are our game plan, so... But they, they did show that he had a lot of bounce lands to get back on his mana really quick if he, does, if he don't get all of the lands. And he did have a chalice, so he might have alternative mana sources. So mm -hmm. I think the Ravages War will still get it to do, but that these, th these two cards will just don't do enough. I mean, they can mm -hmm. deal with all of his threats, and they can deal with all of his lands, and mm -hmm. these spells might just be better. No, well, you can keep in the Wildfire, and then put in Flash Freeze and Pact of Negation. You already took out Phantoms here, right? Yeah. yeah. So how are we at I was one? thinking about also throwing in the Crusader. Yeah, but that's still on the sideboard. Didn't we put in Flash Freeze and Pact of Negation for Destructive Force and Phantoms here? Yeah. Uh, so why are we at 41? We have 20 lands in here. Huh? There's land too many. But I don't know which Did one. we submit a 41 deck? No, we submitted... Uh, 40 cards. And how do we get an extra land? I don't know. But I do remember <laughs> fiddling with the basics. <laughs> um, the jungle What's is going on out. here? I'll just take my swamp, I guess. Odd. I guess we well have everything. Uh, well, just. Uh, yeah, well, we'll have to I, I guess we have everything on video, so <laughs> yeah. uh, I can check whether we actually <laughs> submitted a 41 card deck. <coughs> So do we want to play first? Guess so. Or do we want to let him play first and take extra cards? Ju just play first. I mean, there is <coughs> the interaction with Bounce Lands and Animate Dead, <laughs> but still, oh god, this this deck. <laughs> <laughs> I, imagine there was a Night Veil Spectre in here as well. <laughs> that would have been perfect. This, this is basically the Earth means I can only get the Bad Lands. Yeah, uh, just Mulligan. Yeah. This is it's not <laughs> getting <laughs> better. <laughs> we can set all the balance and see where we get a land. That might actually be... Uh, a the old, uh, he's, he's going to give us time anyway because he has a mid-range deck and not having a lot of lands is in our advantage if we can't yeah, cast Even balance. then, after the balance hits, well, we, we still are still really we're pretty much nowhere. He'll lose all of his creatures, he'll lose I all think of I his think lands. it might even be better to mulligan down to uh, one land and a balance. That might give us a better yeah, chance that to, uh, to win. Yeah, would be better, but I don't think we're getting one land in the balance if well, we ask for uh, it. Who knows? But, but um, I mean, he'll, he'll probably have two or three I cards left after the balance. I so prefer mulliganing. We'll just mulligan. Well, this is pretty good. Uh, yeah. It's, it's an awkward, wild <laughs> <laughs> awkward wildfire <laughs> in there. It's a mulligan to four. And then a nice full specter that we still can't cast <laughs> with an Orso Basilica, but it's it's something, it's something. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have to demolish two that the yeah. mana fixing first. Yeah, exact. Perfect mana fixer. That uh, should work. I mean, I'm sure uh, we're gonna hit something like a... <laughs> like a spider cheese. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure we're gonna hit something like a ghoul turf of the Nightfall Spectre, which will allow us to play our wildfire. That, that's probably how this game is going to uh, to go. Uh, so, next turn we can play the demonic tutor, and what should we look for? Uh, I'm we can actually not, not sure replay yet. the swamp. Just play the tutor for the balance <laughs> and see if we can get maximum value out of his board. Uh, he didn't see the balance yet, of course, but no. it, it's still kind of fishy. Um, well, we actually have option to play the inspector next turn. So if, if we play the swamp, yeah, the that's probably what we're gonna do in the next turn. So the question is, what we want to do now? Um, we can play the spreading sea, stake out one of his lands. And just run extra card, or we can play the Mug Tutor and get whatever resource we think we need. Well, maybe balance after all. 
just get balance from the tutor, play a land in the best turn. Or no, just or really just not, sit back not, and uh, play demonic tutor, get balance, uh, don't play a land, and type some things in the chat or something that you uh, forgot <laughs> to play a land. <laughs> <coughs> Probably works better on Magic Online than in uh, uh, in real life, but. Uh okay. Where do all these buttons go? Well, this is the chat, so we're going to trash talk this guy online. Uh, do we have anything better to get? Oh, uh well, we can get Ravages of War and kill everyone. Uh, yeah, the other alternatives are. There aren't a lot of other uh, I like the balance plan. Let's bluff him yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, let's try to get him. Just take this and then do this and then it and then. Say. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make a real sentence out of it. It even uh, oh, well. it even filtered out the dam, so <laughs> I was just saying no. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> nice bluff, nice yeah. bluff. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> We're just such good trash talkers. <laughs> <coughs> oh, rampant growth, oh, that's nice value. I'm just going to close this. Yeah. Even so, I think that we might have to discard a card, which is which is wrong. yeah, <laughs> which is probably the wildfire. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think we might actually have to discard two cards if he plays another spell. I mean, it would be getting rid of a creature. But he has a black mana. Using it far seek <laughs> more, <laughs> <even> more <laughs> land. <laughs> you can really imagine him thinking about <laughs> next turn and having a big fatty because he still had a fetch land or something and No sir. <laughs> oh hey, there's Tamio. So I'll <laughs> just <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that seems good. <laughs> Choose lands to keep it. I'll keep this one. Okay, <laughs> so we're discarding Wildfire and then something else. Yeah, well um, I, um, choose cards to keep. We can keep four. So I guess we'll want to keep two lands. In two any lands case. and the Nightfall Spectre for sure. And then either the Spreading Seas or the Tamiyo. I think Spreading Seas might be better to just lock him out of his colors. Seems fine. Because he does play a three color deck and we do have a lot more win conditions than Tamiyo. Sure. I mean, we can't even cast <coughs> Tamiyo at the moment. Well, this is some nice value. I play land uh, this turn. Yes, that's true. <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> oh, that's, that's, that's oh, well, <laughs> that's okay for the Phoenix. Yeah, it's ideal. Yeah. Unless he also has the Gruel Turf. So the real question yeah. is, do we want a to play... Chani <laughs> Fetch? <laughs> <laughs> do we want to uh, play the Spectre now or the Spreading Seeds? Mm. Yeah, that's a it's not an easy call. Um. Well, we can always play the Spectre and hope for more value next turn because Spring Seed is one mana less and we get a card from the Spectre and we'll just have more options. Yeah, it's just one mana on the next turn. I don't think he really plays white. Um, oh well, he actually does. He plays a planes. Yeah. But um, that I don't think that he has a lot of threats for three mana. We didn't see any white cards yet, right? No. I was trying to figure out what locking him out of white would uh, do. Um, he really has. He has a lot of double black cards. So maybe we, we would be better off just spreading seeing a, a black source and just deriving him of his double black for grave titan and blood Give demon and stuff like yeah, that. It's probably better to do it on a uh, sanctuary. But I I think I prefer playing the nightfall specter this turn. I mean, it's not like uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, we we don't really have a lot of game except for the Nightfall Spectre at this point, so we probably need to make the best uh, out of it and just hope he's stuck with I don't know either a bunch of lands or expensive cards or explore. Wow, this is this is really a ram deck. Jeez, we just played Balance last turn, man. Yeah. Okay, well, the yeah, Spectre is gonna hit. Yeah. Let's see. Let's just send that in. Let's see what we're getting. And we get Ancient Tomb. Ancient Tomb. Okay, well, just play the Spreading Seas first now. On, yeah, on... On the Sanctuary, I guess. 
it slows him down one turn yeah. because he gets one, one less mana. I mean, he is playing white, so... Yeah, on the Sanctuary. And oh, the end of them. Yeah, seems good. <coughs> There he has planes, so now he has four different mana and he can't cast anything. so much mana. <coughs> so, <laughs> well, this ah, seems like an easy yeah. choice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the value with Hardimar Depths, <laughs> finally! So let's just first send in the Spectre. Yep. I would really like the Grave Titan now, but we get a Swamp. Yeah, know, we we certainly don't have a shortage of lands <laughs> to play at the moment. So I think we'll just play the Crucible. Yeah. And then either and Hallimar Depths or the Boris Garrison. Yes. And I think it's gonna be the Boris Garrison to ensure we can cast a Johnny next turn. Yeah. We can always get value out of the Hallimar Depths sometime later. Mm -hmm. And then we'll return... Uh, I think it's actually best to return a Swamp. So if we, sure, I don't think it really matters a whole lot, but at least we want to have as many blue sources in place as we possibly can. Mm -hmm. We'll have the Grill Tower, so we'll probably get the Sanctuary back, but it does mean you probably will skip another turn. Yeah, that's fine. Border works. So let's just see what the Spectre can do for us. And we get the Chromos Vengeance. <laughs> Interesting, so that's what he was playing white for. Yeah, yeah I mean, we can play that, but it's uh, I just make the Ajani Fengen and lock down the Ghoul Turf. That seems like a great plan, actually. Um, yeah, and then we'll just play the Halimar Depths. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of trying to get some extra value between Halimar Depths and then Forbidden Alchemy. Um, but it's probably just better to play it right now and. Yeah, to hope we hit something useful to play next turn. Mm. We can always do the Benalchemy in our upkeep if we really need to. <laughs> Which we are probably going to do uh, <laughs> then. Yeah, we don't want to draw three lands. Ugh. Do you have a stop mm -hmm. on your upkeep? Uh, not yet. But now we do. Here comes Sanctuary again. So he's going to turn the Gruel Turf and. Oh, wait. <laughs> Okay, so here's the upkeep stop. I want this play to fit an alchemy. This is. Oh, you have to use all of them, so it's kind of good. Well, I hope the fourth card is a good one. Oh, yep, yeah, fine. It is. <laughs> <laughs> and so much for upkeep. And there's also the price. We'll just turn over that with Spectre. Oh, again. now we can do Is it Boilerworks if you turn Harley more depths? Oh! oh. Uh, you have to derive some pleasure from oh, all these. We uh, are having the Primal Command. Primal Command. So it's. Uh, just yeah, that's, down. that's happening. The Boilerworks. Oh, there it goes. Yeah, the game is going fine so far. Nightfall Spectre is beating him down. Ultimate Prize Impact of Negation gives us some safety. Yeah, and Ajayi will go lethal in a couple of turns. Mm -hmm. Oh, the lethal. Well, blasting away all of his lands again is pretty good. Yeah. Well, let's just see what the Spectre can do for us. And we're getting <laughs> Murmuring Bosk. So I suppose we'll just play uh, the Hallimer Deaths. Yeah. See what we're getting on top now. Fact of fiction and two lands. Oh, well, put fact of fiction on top. Fine. And <coughs> we'll just we we could consider just lightning helix and him right now, but um, don't really want to give him no, that much mana. I think keeping him off mana is more important. <coughs> Here he comes. 
merge this eviction. So do we want to save our specter or do we want to counter this with fact indication? Um He says uh, extra all planeswalkers. He's so. taking a Johnny. Well that's no problem, I suppose. Well it is a win condition in some way, but Yeah, it's probably fine if he. Uh, well, mm, 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 mm. it does go up to seven next turn, then you can destroy all lands. At which point, mm. the game will likely be uh, locked up. So uh, I can see. I'll just counter it and, and give him the chance to to worry about the Ajani as well as the Spectre and what else we're doing. Mm -hmm. Just to stop my upkeep again because I don't trust the back. No, it goes a mistake. Well, you may pay. Yes. There are many options. This yeah, game has. it doesn't. Well, just keep it like open. Um, well, it's, it's it's fine. Yeah, we always have to swamp. So this, we can lose this stop. Here comes Spectre Fiction if we want to cast. Hmm. Here comes the Nightfall Spectre with his row of uncastables. <laughs> Yeah, blocker step, no blockers, just take damage. We get a card, it's a forest. Could cast the forest and we'll be one step close to Primal Command. Oh. No cost a um, Murmuring Bosque uh -huh. this turn. Uh -huh. The next turn we can get we get to Primal Command. Choose a tree fork. <laughs> yeah, I, we, uh, we don't have one of those, so. uh, um, the other The Gruul Turf probably. We, we could also Lightning Helix him and be lethal next turn. Sure. I think that's also a bit better. I mean, he might be sitting on something like Terrestrial. And that doesn't hurt us at all at this point. It doesn't? No, because it can't block the Spectre, it can't stop a Johnny. At least I think it can un or can it destroy Planeswalkers as well. Well, in which case we get. Nah, it's a nice fine. It's fine either way. Yeah. The Rostodon is uh, also not the end of the world. <coughs> and we still get the Fact of Fiction to get Fact of Cards, so we have to open the price for a mm -hmm. And Getting him down low so the Spectre can finish him off seems like a good plan. As, as long as he doesn't have double black. I think most of his threats will be out of reach anyway. All this dust. Oh, um, well, it still leaves us with our Crucible and the Primal Command. So it's, yeah, it basically destroys both of our threats. But the Ani wouldn't have to stop that anyway because he would have had the 7 mana. So I just think we'll display the Factor Fiction. Yep. Yeah, now that he's at 5, any Bogard and Hellkite is also lethal. What is this? Yeah, this is the fact of fiction, but it's an awkward screen. He's just going to make piles. Pile 1 and Pile 2. <coughs> we'll probably take the Sorin. He'll divide it up mm. two lands and Spectre and Sorin in the other land, I suppose. So just take Isn't the, the Spectre better than the Sorin? Well, it is a creature and it does fly. But uh, he might have more answers to the Spectre than he might have to Sorin. And yeah. our third Planeswalker is already in the graveyard. Uh, that said, we are basically just waiting on Regard and Hellkite to win. So, whichever one stalls him is best. I mean, Sorin is. Uh, yeah, it's not going. What, what does Sorin make exactly with this plus one? Uh, 1 1 Black Vampire Tokens with Light. Yeah, I don't really have any evasion. Might not win the game by itself. I like the Silent Spectre better. I just take the Silent Spectre. <coughs> and a Flash Freeze. So we'll just. We need a few more Black Mana, so I guess we'll play Don't the Don't you Mana. want a Pluto Delta to filter your deck? Well, is there still something in that we can find? Do we have another island? We have. Five islands here, I think that's all of them. Okay, well then, then don't. <laughs> we have no planet. Oh yeah, you get two cube tickets for playing in a trap. Yeah. Um, I'll just play the Badlands and I'll play sure. the Spectre. No, not the face down. That seems like a bit of a place. Yes. Don't tap all the black mana. No, I don't. More of it. Yeah. Oh, you're casting it? Yeah, like this. Why would I play it more? I don't it'll, it'll for the surprise <laughs> value? Oh, well. <laughs> Go. He, pr he probably knows what's coming at this point, so... I don't know, I don't think Silent Spectre is amused. He prefer to be silent. Well, he's still being Spectre, so... 
Actually, I'm, I'm wondering. He has he has only 12 cards left in his deck. And slash freeze. Yeah, that's not a good plan. But um, he has shown only two black sources. He has the Murmuring Busk and the Swamp, and he still has Swamp in his graveyard, so he has three black sources. I mean, he has Rampant, Golden Farseek. Yeah, but still, he has a lot of, lot of double black cards. He doesn't have a lot of black sources, it seems. Yeah, that might be kind of awkward. I guess this deck will be okay the way it is. Don't change anything. No, I'm happy. Oh well, there's not a lot of time. Okay, no. So you need, need to speed it up a bit. So I'll just mulligan this. And this is a lot better. <laughs> well, I. <But> <laughs> uh, We're on the draw. I think we just should should keep this and be lucky with it. Then. I think that's better than going down to uh, down to five. Unless we get another balanced draw out of that again. Not sure. How many black sources do we play? Uh, eight, I believe. I think it's pretty close between the keep and the mulligan. But, you know, uh, do whatever you uh, want. I'm gonna do some other work, yeah, otherwise I'll, um, we're gonna discuss all the time and run out of time. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll just keep this and make sure that we don't run out of the six minutes that we have left. Okay, we drop loot the Delta. So lucky! <coughs> and he has a Mind Stone. So I'm just going to save on the Demonic Tutor until we know exactly what um, we will be up against. I am going to play out the engineer explosives for two, so I can take out his mind stone and maybe Lotus Cobra or something like that if he presents such a threat. I don't think that an engineer's explosive is any good against the rest of his deck anyway. So, and he has Oblivion Stone, which is pretty okay. We don't have that many permanents after all. Um, we draw, is it boiler works, but we have been alchemy, so I really want to cast that, so just put out the planes and go sit on my alchemy. And just see where the where the game takes us from this point on. We still have a lot of options, the monk tutor is still here. Um, I'm hoping to cast Nightfield Spectre and see how that works out, because it was really great last game. And maybe, might even be good enough to force him to use the Living Stone. He's actually using it already to put a fake counter on the mind stone, I guess. Yeah, I'll just blow up the mind stone. So, while it's that. So that means I can't cast a bit of alchemy, but I'm okay with that. Here we have Battlefield Forge, so we could opt to play Sorin instead. Um I don't think that's very good, so I'll just play the alchemy now and play the as it works. Now oh, it's awkward. Uh, we get two Iron Inspector Negation and Wildfire. Um, I'm just going to take out the Wildfire. And let the other three cards drop. I don't think we need those right now. Putting in the Boiler Works, taking the planes back. So in two turns we will be able to cast Wildfire, it's a little neutralizes the Bloodmine Stone, any threats he might put on the board by then. The worst thing that can happen is that he has Primal Command, puts Spoiler works back again, but he doesn't have the turbo start that he had last game, so... Um, I think we can handle it with the Demonic Tutor and the Balance once more, if it turns out to come to that. He does have the Primal Command, so we'll just be balancing him out again. Searched for Terrestadon this time. Okay, so we draw up the Voidal Works. I'll just cast 
my tutor, trying to adjust the balance. Um, so the border works. Take the bad lines back. <coughs> so he's playing the photo truth. It's okay, it'll give him a lot of mana. He needs eight. He needs one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So with a land, he's lethal. So we actually have to cast the bundles right now. It won't be a whole lot of value, but it will prevent us from dying to rest down. Um, so it's a bit of a shame to have to sort of waste it for a little advantage, but that's uh That's the way it is. If he has land, he can play Crest down there and screw it anyway. So. He has five cards, so we only have to ditch one. Um, that means we'll be keeping all of our spells. I want the Earth Mace, I want the Badlands, so I'm just going to run off the Battlefield Forge. <coughs> so he doesn't have any lands, so he's stuck on 4 mana um, I'm going to see if I can force him to uh, use his Oblivion Stone this wasn't depth very well yes I know so if he doesn't play the land next turn he does have it so he can't stone away the Sorin that's a bit of a shame but he can still wildfire and just take out his entire board um, I'm just going to let Sorin make me an emblem before he gets turned to mush. I'll let the vampire get in. He doesn't use the stone, that's okay. Uh, we need to play a land, it'll be the Arab Mesa. And we sacrifice it for the mountain. Now we just play the wildfire. Take out his board. We could wait and be a little bit greedy and see if he actually wants to throw something else in, but if he plays another land he gets to keep Cruel Turf, so um, I'm fine with this outcome. So we have to sacrifice four lands, I'm going to keep the boiler works. Um, because we'll need uh, another land anyway to make this work. So now it's just waiting on land and we can play the uh, the Silent Spectre. We can probably play the Nightfield Spectre not long after, depending on which land it is. They both will have an additional power, so that's okay. He drew three to three village, but the single green mana won't help him, I guess. Sphere of the Suns, that's actually one of the best cards to draw right now. It allows us to play both the Spectres. <coughs> animate dead. Um, there isn't something good in his graveyard so I'm just going to play our more creature face down. Keep it like this. We don't have anything useful in our graveyard either so we're just waiting for land. He drew another one. There's a Johnny, but that doesn't do a whole lot for us either. So now we're just playing the waiting game. And there's an island. So in goes the Spectre, and we'll just have him be joined by yet another Spectre. And now we have a two turn clock on him. Well, it's nothing better to do than attack a tree to village, which is absolutely fine. Now we get Cryptic Command to back it up and we can actually cast it this time. It's pretty amazing in itself. Oh, uh, we get a Planes from the Nightfield Spectre, so we'll just lay that out as well. I'm not even bothering playing a Johnny, I want to sit on the Cryptic Command. And he's just giving it up. So, welcome to the next game. And we're playing Large Brandon, who finished pretty fast. Uh, he took only 12 minutes for his match, so I think he has an aggressive deck, so we want to dive what we want to play first and see if we can uh, 
out-tempo him with our massive destruction cards. This is a bit of an awkward hand. Um, we don't have black mana, we do have a bit of an alchemy and factor fiction, so there is a bit of potential if we draw a land. And we have three turns to do so, so I would keep this, but I don't know what you're thinking about. Are we on the play or the draw? We're on the play. So no uh, turn one discard silence, Pactor shenanigans? No, I um, not. It is a bit shaky. We are playing a lot of lands, so that's that's and good. actually we are playing 41 cards I can see here, we have 7 in our hand, 34 in our deck, so we have 20 lands in our 41 cards deck. Okay, <laughs> yeah, then keeping it is probably fine. I mean this hand is uh, very slow, at the same time uh, we can, uh, we, we have the card draw to hit our important spells. So. Yeah, and I, I think that if he doesn't have the real tempo deck, like in a wild Nakatal into uh, um Robs and stuff that we can handle it if we draw. Mm. Very good uh, good spell. Here we have Fathoms here. Should we play it out for one tree right now or should we just keep it in reserve and find another item to Did you think Lodge Brandon was playing an aggro deck? Yeah. Then probably just play it. Well, well Yeah well there 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 is some benefit to keeping it in hand. Then returning to islands. Um, discarding a big creature and then getting that back with mm -hmm. animate that, yeah. but it seems too convoluted. You probably just need it as a blocker, especially since we're gonna use our mana in the next turns on, say, forbidden alchemy and whatnot. Oh, look at that <laughs> tiny swamp! No, oh well, something that else. That tiny mountain yeah, valley. I, I across, couldn't yeah. even uh, see it. <coughs> It was pretty amazing. It was like we got a message in the middle. His board cleared out. It was like, oh, he's. Uh, why, why what what happened to the stack? <laughs> why is it so small? <laughs> well, this is better. Like he's playing it. I mean, it is kind of fitting to uh, make the experiment one super small at the <laughs> beginning, and then okay, well, it doesn't evolve right now, but then to make it bigger. And Boros Garrison. It's not ideal. <laughs> Oh, let's have it back. <laughs> no. So yeah, he is playing some kind of multicolor aggro deck. I like that mm -hmm. uh, as a strategy. Just pick the cheapest cards in every pack and take the mana fixing to uh, to go with it. Mm -hmm. No, we just played a Boros Garrison. No. Oh, uh, it's going to trick yeah. us. Walk. He might have got shot. Okay. But I'm not here. Oh, there's Wasteland. And and here we go again. I shouldn't have done that. Now the Dry Sophisticate cannot attack anymore. <laughs> oh, well, maybe we. Uh, um, um, yeah, I think we should just play it so we can do Bin Alchemy next turn. Yeah, it's probably still better. You know, this destructive force <laughs> lurking in our hands at the moment. <laughs> uh, yeah. Seems a bit out of place. Uh, I think we want to block the figure to force him to use the red mana. Uh, seems fine. <coughs> and then he has fork bolt. He also has fathoms here. At least we can get it back with animated dead if we want to. Um. Well, I guess we can ultimate price experiment one, then animate that it, and then evolve it with Silent Spectre. And, and not to say that's the best play, just going through the possibilities. Unfortunately, we cannot ultimate price figure. Um, well, there are basically two options. You can take the damage and Forbidden Alchemy looking for yeah, likely balance or demonic tutor for balance. Mm -hmm. uh, alternatively, <coughs> you can ultimate price some creature this turn, hoping that it will give you an additional turn to uh, to draw into something. Yeah. You can always or play silent specter. Yes, or animate that. Um, uh, the phantoms here, but that seems too awkward. What you could do is play silent specter, morphed, block. Perhaps kill something and, and then, then animate that back. Yeah. 
Um, it's also not uh, not the greatest uh, <laughs> approach because yeah, what <coughs> likely might happen is he plays some Fatty on the next turn. You experiment one goes to three three. You have to chump it with Silent Spectre. You oh, get out to thirteen. Trade for the figure of Destiny. Well, yeah, but that one is then possibly not going to attack in uh, in that turn. Then you get back the Silent Spectre with Animate Dead. You well, I guess that that still buys you a turn. Yeah, might be the best play. So let us do it like this. I um, don't really look forward to taking the six damage now, going to nine, perhaps even taking seven mm. or or eight if he has another red source. I, I love this forest, by the way. Mm. And this island, oh, this deck is awesome. I didn't take into account that we could also forbid an alchemy into a book and hell kite, which would make the forbidden alchemy play much better. So you want to trade figure, I suppose, and not the experiment one. Um. As soon as he draws a red source, the figure will be a 4 4 problem, while the experiment one. Yeah, he likely doesn't have a creature to evolve the experiment one. He would have played that one. Mm. He also doesn't have a mountain, but I'm not sure which one is more likely, probably. Well, this well a 4 4 is more. Uh, yeah, the Spectre is, 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 is much and worse than, uh, than a 3 3 given a Spectre, so this is fine. Here it goes. <coughs> and we'll st we still are at a comfortable 11. Here comes Avenger. Ah, oh, this guy. Why didn't he play that before combat? It doesn't make a lot of sense, does no. it? No. He should have just done it that way. I mean, it's still Rexus, but. Eric May said, at least you can get Badlands and get Spectre back. Yes, that seems like the play. Oh. Still good. Can we. What happened to all these screens? Yeah, we can't. Yeah. Thinking about getting a basic land to uh, mm -hmm. avoid the non-basic land walk, but we still need the black mana, so black lands is uh, needed. Um, we can also do ultimate price on the Avenger, right? So no. Just, let's just take the Silent Spectre back, and we can ultimate price to try it next turn. Mm -hmm. if, um, if that's the only creature that's still capable of attacking, it's not keeping Avenger riders. Old champion. What does that do exactly? <laughs> it's three two with haste and echo, and it deals three damage when it comes to play. Decent. Yeah. It evolves as experiment one. Still nothing with four power, but yeah, you do you go down to a very low life total. And just kill him. Um, well, it doesn't kill him. He can regenerate. Yeah, but um, next turn he'll have to tap out to keep the champion. We can then buck the champion, also price to try it, and we'll go to one from his experiment. And then I he has no creatures left. If we block the champion, we'll go to two anyway, and he'll have a 3-3 three, three threat, with and mana open in his next turn. So it seems to me that it's sure. better to... You just make sure the experiment gets down. Yeah, he regenerates it. Demon Tutor. That's an option for next turn, perhaps. Mm -hmm. Well, that's not attack. Yeah, he's keeping it. And we'll just pop the price this way. Yeah, but still, now we're in a in an annoying situation because uh, your play of blocking the experiment one and not the Kelden champion was based on well somehow him attacking with Kelden champion mindlessly into the silent specter, which obviously uh, wasn't going to happen. Probably would have been in a better position if we had blocked the Kelden champion. He would have had open mana, but he would have at least already killed. Uh, yeah, and he would have had a trickery experiment. Yeah, so. Well, if he had another creature, then the experiment could just kill the Spectre. I guess. Oh well. Let's see. Um, so I think here we'll just sit on the Forbidden Alchemy. What can we do Modic Tudor for? Nothing we can cast this turn. We well, can't take uh, balance. A or land? We, we could do a land, but. The Modic Tudor uh, for a land and then place Fear of the Suns? That seems fine. Mm. Yeah, that's, that's possible. I'm not sure it's better. Uh, I mean, we could also forbid an alchemy now and then the tutor for something great next turn. I'm not yeah. sure what we have. Stuff like balance could be okay, <coughs> but it all depends on his play. If he has another creature to evolve the experiment, then we're going like to. He lose. likely has something. He didn't play a land. 
if he has if, if, if he has burn we're dead anyway we don't want to give him a lot of draws to get burn um, we uh, can expect him to have a creature next turn in which case the experiment one would evolve and we're just stone dead and then um, we can at least block with mana open maybe he doesn't attack try to play it safe that makes sense uh, yeah so forbidden alchemy into the land and then the monitor to the balance next turn might be uh, might be better uh, yeah seems fine just pass so let's hope he doesn't have a lot of whammies in hand okay well that's uh one card that uh, uh yeah he's not gonna play around too many more spells okay oh that's to see before he looks at our top card sure maybe he sees something like a wildfire and <laughs> knows what the deck is about mm -hmm. so once again i think this flash freeze might be a good card yeah um we also have the alliance which can block and we have Mm -hmm. Well, Arkage that, that can block, if somewhat awkwardly. Indeed. I think that this card is not as good against him. No. So we'll just move it around. This so the force might be too slow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that card hasn't really impressed me in this draft so far. Seven mana is a lot. Yeah, it is. Ooh, large Brendan, I started a chat with you. Yeah, he submitted his deck. Oh. Then it's, uh, it's a chat. I was card. expecting more. Um... What else? Yeah, our deck is just a bunch of slow yeah. nonsense. We, we could take out things like Cryptic Command, which would be pretty slow in our deck, considering if you can't play it on turn 4, and just fill it up with a bit more solid creatures. Uh, sh <coughs> sure, I guess. Looks like the Crucible. don't think that it'll be much use if we bought out all of these cards. Oh, the entire team of the deck. Yeah, I know, but I don't think we'll have time to explore the team against this aggressive deck. Sure. So that already gives us three cheap creatures. You can put in the Prowler for some extra anime death options. But I don't think it's very good. You can just discard mm -hmm. a random land. I would rather land. have Flash Freeze mm -hmm. over Carnivage. Would you have rather have Carnivage over Coral Helm Commander? No, I would prefer Coral Helm. Yeah, and we should probably cut the land, because... <laughs> well... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, it's 20 land still. Um, I think it's Swamp again. Show and Tell might be good against it. Maybe an island. Well, still not. Well, we good. can. We no, it's still not. We have nothing. <laughs> then he'll say Experiment 1, <laughs> we'll do Savannah Lines. <laughs> we'll oh, so so we have to again. add another card again? Yeah. I think it's going to be one of these two, maybe the Crusader. I think that might be too slow. For its double white mana cost. Sure. Maybe just keep the cryptic command. Whatever. Then we shouldn't cut get the item, we just cut swamp instead. Sure. Especially since we also have the Crawlhan commander now. Yeah, okay, so yes, we would like to play first. Our deck again doesn't seem that strong. Unfocused. This is a good hand. We can play it's fine. Alliance on turn one. Oh yeah. <coughs> oh yeah. Can we do we have a <laughs> white land to fetch with Polluted Delta? Yeah. No, right? We have to cast it from Forge. Fine. Ah, we won't be expecting that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, we sideboarded into uh, uh, an aggro deck. But fuck, he skipped huh? his turn. He did? Yeah. Yeah, I would be scared of a Savannah line <laughs> as well. <laughs> well. That really startled him. Should I play the border works? Because he doesn't waste land and Evan Sprites maybe just develop a couple of other lands first. Um, or maybe if he does play a waste land, he skips another turn. And yeah, it seems fine at this point. And you're gonna be able to guess Factor Fiction and everything before he gets off the Avalanche Riders. So, no, seems fine. Oh. Right <laughs> well, we couldn't cast it in the Dolphin's Forge anyway, so... No, that's true. Should we kill the hero? Uh, yes. I, well... Hmm. 
you definitely want to play something in this turn. You definitely want to play the ultimate ultimate prize in this turn, just for tempo reasons. Um, okay. I guess killing the hierarch right now is fine. He does need to get a chance to get the tempo back that he lost from uh, mm. from skipping the turn accidentally. He'll be so pissed if he loses this game because he skipped this. Well, first maybe he turn. didn't uh, skip it accidentally. Maybe he just kept. Uh, he mulliganed to six and kept a no land hand. Might also be possible. <laughs> and then he drew the forest and played the high rock. Wow. Then he drew the mountain and played scavenging ooze. He's so yeah. lucky. Yeah. We'll just play the nightfield specter and see if we can munch a bit off of his, off of his deck. Sure. Yeah, mm -hmm. we're the aggro deck. Uh, Next turn right we can do the fact of fiction if we have the hell kite, just go oh. for value. And yeah, or we can animate that, his noble hierarch, if he taps out. Yeah. Ding. We don't want to pop that. He also doesn't seem to have blue mana yet. Oh, he preempts our animate that. This man. And stop more berserkers. Um, well, let's see what Spectre does. I don't think this guy can attack. <coughs> Actually, we're still losing this race. <laughs> yeah, just <coughs> to take quit. Uh, well, we could, of course, double block, <coughs> say, the Stormblood Berserker with both guys. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of a risk. But we haven't seen that many instant removal spells yet, yeah. right? But I'd rather see if we can get a cheap blocker from his deck. Sure. I mean, most of the cards that he's playing will be able to play, only the green cards he won't be able to. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. Mountain Valley. Well, we don't have anything good to look for, so I'll just play one of our own lands. Yeah, we can, we can fetch a mountain with it, right? Yeah. Yeah, isn't that better than any of our lands at the moment? Might be, but if we factor fiction and we find the mountain, then it's no good to have the Mountain Valley. Oh, uh, right. Uh, okay, yeah, so we'll play just fizzle fizzle out or yeah. something. Sure. Fair we'll display the fact of fiction. We'll have to take six damage, that's okay. <coughs> Hope he taps out so we can drop the Bugard and Hawkeye in. He has Avenge Riders. That counts as tapping out, I suppose. We'll just cast fact of fiction now. We already play the land for his turn. And these. Oh, there's the Hellkite. Yeah, we have the Hellkite, so we're taking the pile without the Hellkite. That's pretty much guaranteed. Yeah. And I think he wants to spread the Hellkite and the Wildfire. Because the, those will be the biggest threats. And oh, you, you put some Wildfire with the Hellkite. Yeah, that's, that makes that's sense. correct due to animate that. Yeah, we'll but we'll we take the, the non Hellkite pile. We'll take the lands and the Kartra. So yeah, then he blows up right as the boiler works. No biggie. We can spread Exesus Mountain, so we cannot uh, play the Echo of Avalanche Riders. Do we want to take two damage from the Avalanche Riders? Um, and we'll take eight, we'll go to seven. And we can animate that, shoot down the Berserker, have a blocker for Scavenging Ooze. <coughs> or maybe we should block. We should shoot the Scavenging Ooze and have a blocker for the Berserker. That might be better. Yeah, that might be good. Um, yeah, that scavenging ooze is otherwise really getting out of hand, of okay, course. Yeah, um, yeah I guess uh, keeping the Savannah lines back is uh, better. Yeah, seems like the best plan. Ha! Crawlhelm Commander. Best Maybe, uh, I'm not sure you want to attack with Nightfall Spectre this... Uh, well, probably. these two will die. And then we'll have the 4 or 5 dragon and Savannah Lines to block the Berserker. And if he does draw a removal spell, he needs to play a yeah. he needs to have a land because he only has green mana. Yeah, then he has a removal spell for a creature, so uh, that seems fine. Okay. And maybe we even get something good. Yeah, he does have some haste guys, which make it annoying. But we spend his seas at the mountain, so the haste guys are probably not coming out. Yeah. Sure. And even so, if he does spend his mana to get a creature remove one of ours, um, he won't have any range to get to our uh, get to our life totals, and we get shardless agent, Funky. which we can't play, but which would cascade into really nice things for us. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll just play the animate death on the Hellkite first. Yeah, 
ping him for two and a scavenging boost for two and then spreading seas turn mountain. That's nice to have. Yeah, blue Avalanche Riders. Well, we are fixing his blue mana, so he might yeah, yeah. actually concede right now and then we'll play your third game. Oh, well, this still looks fine, I suppose. Well, fine is a big <laughs> word if I look at this deck, but uh, it can work. Ugh. So, I see potential. <laughs> turn so one discards of other lines. <laughs> turn three, anime dead and back. <laughs> um, nah, I just should not get this. I mean, we are playing a lot of lands, but yeah. still, that's. If we don't draw a land in the first two turns, we're basically risky. already lost. So. Yep. So just mulligan to something that we can cast is is a lot better yeah, already. Better. Matching a Johnny. And he has a slow hand with nothing. Indeed. So mm. I guess we'll just play Sphere or should we hold the Flash Freeze Pass? Yeah, I'm thinking what he can pass. have. Oh. Um, Shortless Agent or something. I mean, w there was a reason why he kept his hand. Um, but yeah, he probably had a lot of blue spells or maybe a lot of small guys. He was really hoping on that hero being alive, so I think he was holding on to blue spells. And, and it seems really likely that you prefer to play Flash Freeze or Ultimate Prize on this turn. That's fear Whereas, yeah, that's fear. Well, I don't know, I'm, I would be more inclined to keep the mana up. Yeah, so would I. I mean, I'm all for developing mana, but you still need the land to actually do something with it next turn. Yeah, but Sphere doesn't really develop your mana. And, and there goes Wasteland. Yeah. What is this? Uh, you should have tapped mana, but well, it doesn't really matter. Uh, yikes. Okay, so I guess in that case, Fear of the Suns would have been better, but uh, yeah. But yeah, he <coughs> doesn't seem to be doing all that. Well, he has plenty more now. If he just threw that this turn, or he would have played it last turn. On land. Yay, an island. Now we can even make use of the fathoms here. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And here comes Avalanche Riders. No Blood Ray Dove. And he gets a free figure with this one. The other card was absolutely valid. So this is getting out of hand pretty quickly. Indeed. Um. Yeah, mm -hmm. so I guess what we have to do is uh, Fathom Seer, Return Lands, hope to draw into Balance, or Demonic Tutor, that seems to be our best chance at yeah. the moment. Or maybe the Hellkite and animate that. Yeah. Oh, and it's Balance. Okay, so, so play the Arcane Sanctum probably. Um, sure. Yeah, we'll have to discard two cards. Yeah, so we have to plan ahead a bit now. Yeah. What's going to happen next turn is, well, he's going to attack with all of his creatures. We're going to go down to a low life total. Yeah. Then on our turn, we are probably playing Islands of Balance. Well, I think we'll just be playing Balance, right? So to No, we probably, uh, well, or we want to keep a counter on the Sphere. We'll see what he does. Hmm. Um, and then the turn after, it's going to be... Johnny or Sorin. I think that we can safely discard Tamiyo because we're not going to get to her anytime well, soon. I'm not sure about that. Well, we are going to lose a lot of cards to Bellet as well because he doesn't have a large hand size. Yeah, that's true. Oh, well, yeah, then it doesn't really matter. Sure. So we'll just throw her away, and then the question is do we want to have Crawlhound Commander or maybe an island? I think we could afford to discard an island. We're going to need the source for. For Ajani anyway, we could cast Soren out of these lands, but... Um, 
but we have so much lands, I think we'd be better off just waiting for land having spells than waiting for spells having lands. I don't think you want to, you, you certainly don't want to discard a land. Um, yeah, it might be any of the non-ultimate prize cards. Then uh, perhaps. Um, yeah, I think you want to keep both planeswalkers to have something to yeah. win with. Perhaps even discard the flash freeze. We're actually going to be tapping out a lot when we're playing the yes. actual. It yeah. might be a bit risky, but. Uh, well, we're not going to win this game without risks at this point. Well said. <coughs> we're going to take six damage, I suppose, <coughs> if we block Figure of Destiny. He'll probably put all of his mana into it to making it fat, which means we get to keep more cards and it's good for us. Yeah, do we want that? Well, we can block on the three We would power. prefer him to just unload his hand and dump a bunch of creatures and well, well, also not really. Yeah, blocking figures is fine, I guess. That least forces him to use at least one mana. No, uh, no, 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 we shouldn't yeah. have done that. Uh, we don't because then we have to keep the phantoms here uh, in play. Mm -hmm. We should have just jumped. Jumped uh, so that phantoms here would die because yes. now he gets to keep creature. Yes. Let's hope he misplays and pumps the figure up. And it does seem to be Whew. Whew. winning because of opponent failure. And he plays a land. Well, with our player, our and opponents. And Firebolt. Yeah. So I think he's going to go pretty lethal on, on our life totals. <laughs> Wildfire. <laughs> what the hell? So um, play, an, play a land, or should we just balance now and make sure that he, doesn't, that he isn't able to cast his power spells? I think you play a land. You need the cards in your hand to be able to uh, to win. Well, but if he doesn't... And the counter on the Sphere of the Suns. <coughs> because if we play the land after, we can get to keep three cards and we'd have to keep the two islands and one of the planeswalkers and discard the rest. That's bad. So if you play a land and play balance, we get still get to keep three cards. It would be a land and both planeswalkers are a planeswalker and ultimate price. Yes, that seems better. But we do run the risk if he does have another burn spell, yeah, that yeah. he just has a land and uh, choose lands to keep balance. Must be hard. Life is risky. It is. At least he can flash back to Firebolt in some time. Mm. And I think the first thing we should do when we play the Ajani Vention is shoot him in the face for three. <laughs> Just so we're getting up to six again. Okay, he's losing all the generic lands. Choose cards to keep. Yeah, you still land on the two planes warp, which yeah. probably gives you the best chance. You know, looking at uh, the deck. Uh, the things that do something in our deck are Demonic Tutor, Balance, <laughs> and Animate Dead. And yeah, essentially the other cards haven't really impressed uh, in any way. Now, but it, I think that's, that's a bit of the fate of the non-powered cube. Some of the cards really are a hell of a lot more powerful than a lot of the other cards. Mm. So let's see what he has. He has Eternal Witness. Uh -oh. that, that's actually okay. He's going to take the Blood Rate Elf. That's then he probably has another land in his hand. But now we can play a Jani, shoot his witness, go to six. Uh, no, then then, well. then he would kill a Jani. We can also play Soren, get a one-one Black Vampire with uh, uh, with Life Link, so it can block the witness or the Blood Rate Elf, depending on what attacks. The downside of that well, is that if he... Probably boats are going to attack, but then you block the witness with the 1-1. One, one. Yeah. But uh, if he does, does hit a removal with either his Blood Rate Elf or has it in his hand, then he can kill the 1-1. One, one well, actually, if he plays the Well, if he has elf, one in his hand, then it doesn't really matter. I haven't seen much removal from his deck yet. It's likely that he'll just get some kind of creature. Hmm. And yeah. And we have seen Forked Bolt, so we I will lose the Forked Bolt if we play Sorin. Um, but I, then again, I think he will be playing the Blood Rate Elf, hoping that he had something good, attack with everything. Sorin. We're probably so losing to that anyway. Yeah, so we, we'll just hope that this holds. We draw a land next turn. We can. We might be able to play the final lines and the Johnny. Oh fuck! <laughs> Oh, 
Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he also doesn't have. Oh, yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Oh. oh, what a misplay. <laughs> Classic. Let's see what, what we would have drawn would have been mountain. So we could have played the Chani and Savannah Lions. Yeah, I think we made the right play. We might have even uh, won this game had we uh, activated Sorin. Um, yeah, well, we can't win them all. This was, uh, this was I awkward. Think, I think winning would, would still have been hard against this hand with a Blood Prey Delph. And uh, yeah. uh, he still had the, the Fireball. Well, once you have two Planeswalkers on the battlefield. Um, yeah. yeah, sorry, <laughs> you have been eliminated. 